<coughs> we're here. We're here. We're here. Good morning. Hi, everybody. It's uh, it's your buddy, Uncle Bruce here, wearing his green T-shirt today because we got to pull out all the stops. Uh, <laughs> what is going on? Uh, welcome one. Welcome all. It's Friday. This is August the 13th, 2021, uh, Friday the 13th. And we are what is going on? trying to uh, figure out welcome in plain all. English what has been going on in the last few hours, uh, particularly since the particularly since the close of business Thursday night, yesterday, when we were watching our uh, one of our favorite stocks, SoFi, close at 1746 after reaching a high of 1752 or so, the shares uh, looked to be on a tear, earnings were about to come out, and uh, the stock had been going up and up and up all day long. It ended up with, a, like I said, a gain of 56 cents uh, looked fantastic volume was uh, 36 million shares on the day yesterday and uh, we began to uh, watch the aftermarket trading and within a few minutes uh, of the close the shares were even higher they were as high as 15.75 even looked to me like we were going to reach 16 dollars a share if not i don't even know if we printed 16 on the aftermarket last night i don't remember it's such a blur now so much activity and then within probably 30 seconds, we saw the stock go from about the high 15s to, or the high 17s to the uh, to the 16 range, and then into the 15 range. And we are now this morning at 15.50 a share on the pre-market with a volume of 1.4 million changing hands. We're down $1.97 from the actual close of business last night on the New York Stock Exchange. Make that NASDAQ, sorry. This used to be a New York stock, now a NASDAQ stock. And we're at 1549, 1550 on 1 1.4 million shares. The company came up with their earnings and um, delivered on all kinds of measures. Uh, very strong numbers, very good engagement, very good customer numbers. Everything growing, 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 growing. They made one report. They had to disclose everything as public companies do. This is the first time they've ever been a public company to disclose all their figures. And they did disclose uh, the cost of going public. And this is a number that uh, is a one off thing. Uh, you go public one time, uh, like you get married, you know, theoretically once you uh, you go public one time and you have to pay expenses that you would not normally pay to become a publicly traded company. And, and that includes a lot of legals, a lot of filing fees, uh, listing fees, uh, auditing fees, uh, on and on it goes. It, it is, it is a, a nightmare of paperwork that must be handled. You are also tangoing with a, gr a group you have never tangled with before, the folks at the SEC. You're now trying to become a reporting issuer, a publicly traded company, and you're trying to become part of the public world. Uh, you have to go through all the SEC rules and regs. And in the case of SoFi and 500 other companies, I should say, in the case of SoFi and probably up to a thousand other companies, 500 of which are SoFi, private companies trying to go public, and 500 of which are, are SPACs that are trying to vend in their private masters. You have 500 on one side who are already public, 500 on the other side who are trying to go public. All 1,000 have to uh, talk to the SEC at the top of the pyramid. And the SEC changed the rules back in the spring of this year on, on going public and disclosure rules, the warrant uh, reassessment rules, uh, write down rules, uh, just all kinds of BS that came out of left field that were instantly in, instituted, passed without discussion, and all of a sudden, a thousand corporations had to restate all of their financials instantly. You can't do that by taking an eraser and going, okay, well, I'll, I'll just change last quarter's number from this to this. Oh, no, 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 you can't. You can't do that. No, you have to bring in the auditors to re-audit the entire deal all over again. You have to bring in the lawyers, securities lawyers, very expensive people, highly specialized, to refile all of these documentations. And so what ended up happening in the case of SoFi and everybody else is there was at least a 100 day delay in going public for almost every company out there that was in the middle of a deal to go public through the SPAC system. 
SoFi yesterday revealed to its shareholders, the public, just how expensive that was to them. When it's all said and done, whatever expenses the public company incurred, the SPAC, and all the expenses that SoFi incurred, the private company, merging together, putting the books together of the two companies and coming out to the public with, with the first quarterly release, they had to disclose, hey, here's how much this cost us. It didn't just cost SoFi money, it cost the SPAC a bunch of money. And both had to merge their numbers together to come up with a cohesive number. And if you take out all the BS from the SEC, all of that crap, and the reinstatement of uh, values of these of these warrants that are so-called a liability now, like all of a sudden trying to raise more money on an option is a liability. Where they come from with that one, I don't know. I don't want to know because it is unexplainable. It is uninterpretable to the average human being. The bottom line is hundreds of millions or, or whatever it is, millions of dollars had to be uh, taken off the top from SoFi's numbers to make them declare that they lost money in this latest quarter. They had to declare a loss. They quickly said, we didn't lose money, we lost paper value. It didn't, we didn't have to pay money out in the last three months for this, this these losses. These are write downs and we had to write them down. We paid our legals months ago. Six months ago, we started paying legals. We, we were doing this deal back in, in, in February, March, way back when. Uh, the latest quarter is when we had to reinstate the financials to adjust for it. So if you take the so-called uh, earnings before income taxes, depreciation and other nonsense, and you come out with, with a real flow number, like how much did you bring in and how much did you spend to be in business? Let's just talk about the business. You go to that level and you come up with this company going, holy crap, they're making all kinds of money. These guys are doing great. They're doing very well. Uh, they are supposed to lose money right now. They're supposed to lose money right now. When you're a brand new public company for the very first time, you're going to incur new expenses you haven't had before. You're going to reorganize your org organization. You're going to hire a bunch of people, buy a bunch of office furniture, get a bunch of equipment. I mean, this is typical. I'm talking old school pre-COVID, I guess. You have to reorganize your corporation to become a publicly traded reporting issuer kind of a company. And this costs millions of dollars that you cannot get back. You have to pay it and you have to invest in it. You have to bring the people in and you have to hire more uh, human resources people. You have to hire investor relations specialists. You have to hire uh, consultants and on and on. And this is money out, money out. This is part of the cost of being a public company. They knew that going in anyway you got to report it and you've got to show it to the investors to say, hey, investors, <laughs> for to for us to protect you, we, the public company, have to spend all this money on all these people and all of these uh, reporting systems to protect you. But we have to pay it out of your money that you're giving us to go public with to protect you. And the SEC is going to keep putting on more rules and regulations. The Congress is going to keep putting on more rules and regulations. Every politician is going to put on more rules and regulations to make it more safe, more safe, more safe for investors. But it's going to come out of investors' pockets. And so public companies are under a higher obligation to make more money, to try to make more money, to cover these expenses. But you got you got to write it off up front. And that's what SoFi has been doing, despite all that. Despite all of these expenses and all these payouts and everything else, these guys are on fire. They're doing fantastic. They have over 2.6 million customers now. The thought was that they would have 3 million by the end of the year. I think they'll have that and more. I have a feeling that their growth curve is going to be higher and faster than anyone else suspected. I heard last night, uh, I was watching one of these uh, news releases here on my computer going through Google last night and going through through Yahoo Finance, and I was going through uh, Market Watch, and I'm going through uh, Investors Daily, and I'm going, through, I'm going through all the places I can go to get info, 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 info. What's going on? What's going on? Caught an article, uh, caught an interview uh, with one uh, one uh, guy who said, it was actually on CNBC. It was one of the CNBC gangs saying, uh, I think these guys are going to get taken out. <laughs> he just came out and said, eh, they're going to be bought out. They're going to be, a, it's a takeover target. This company will be a takeover target. It probably isn't going to be this week, but um, yeah, you grow at the pace you're growing at. You become the number one online finance company 
uh, in the USA, uh, you're going to be bought up by a big boy, a really big company. You, you, this is a big company so far. It's going to have a billion dollars in revenue this year, approximately a billion. They're on their way. They're well on their way. They're getting their bank charter shortly. They're going to get that. This company is going to become a multi, multi billion dollar organization, like 50 billion, 80 billion, 100 billion. And that's big. 100 billion. That's big. But that's not big enough. They're going to be picked off by $500 billion, $1 trillion companies. One of them is going to buy them up. It could be a friendly deal. It could well be that one large company approaches these guys and says, we love you. We're prepared to sign five year contracts for the top 100 employees to not go anywhere. We're prepared to hand out generous stock options to the top 100 people and the, the, all 1500 of you, 2000 workers, all are welcome to stay. We're not going to tell you how to run your business. We're not going to send in a couple of guys from head office and start cutting people left, right, center. We're, we're not interested in that. We are interested in leaving SoFi alone. We're interested in the hierarchy running SoFi as they see fit. Just keep doing what you're doing. It's just that instead of you owning SoFi shares, you now owe share, own shares of company blah. And we'll do the swap. And we'll give you options on, on what you had to what you're going to get. It's all relative. And we're going to do it at a bonus of maybe 50% higher than what you're trading at. What are you trading at now? It's a year down the road. SoFi is trading at 100 bucks a share. How about 150 bucks a share? How about a friendly offer at $150 a share for the entire company? All shareholders, all employees, directors, everybody, and the top management. You tell us who the top management is all get five-year guaranteed contracts so that no one gets fired. No one gets let go. Now, if you're 64 and you're thinking of retiring anyway, good. You don't, you're not bound to stay. You don't have to sign the contract. You can work for the year. And, you know, you, I'll give you up to five years. How many of the five years would you like to commit to the company for? Two more years you want to retire? Great. Work two more years and then retire. No hard feelings. It's all good. It could be that friendly. It could be. It could be a takeover with four buyers where they're outbidding each other. It could be a hostile takeover where this company does not want to be taken over by anybody for any, any, any amount. No, we're not, we're here to grow another five years because we think in five years, we're a $500 stock. We feel that from the $100 level we're at now, we're going to go to $500 a share growing how we're growing. And then if you want to take us over 750 to 800 shares, what you're going to have to pay to get us. That's what we think in the next five years. If we sell now, at 150, we don't believe that the new stock that we will get in the company that takes us over will quadruple in value in the next five years because the company is so large, the one that's taking us over, they'll be lucky to double their value. Still good, but not as good. And there are people in SoFi who I believe, and I'm talking about senior management and high end people, who I believe are looking at their personal stock situations, bonuses salaries and everything else and they're thinking to themselves i could be worth over a billion dollars by the time i leave here in five to ten years i could be a billionaire and i'm not giving this dream up i'm not giving it up for a, a 50 million dollar payout no thanks this is i'm 45 years old this is my last kick at the can i'm working until i'm 60 65 this is my 20-year window of, of making the bucks and i've set myself up to be a senior vp of a blah 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 company and I got a nice bunch of stock options here on SoFi and this thing is on fire and this company is going to be 500 a share in the next five years. And with that and all the stock options I have and the whatever I'm exercising and the bonuses I'm getting, I'll be worth over a billion dollars. And if I take a deal in the next six months to a year at 100, 150 a share and walk out or, or take that deal, I'm going to be locked in at about 100 million. And that's one tenth or one twentieth of what I could be worth. That is the thinking, I believe inside the heads of the top management of SoFi and the, the top shareholders. That's my, that's my, hope. today's price of 1550 is a joke. It's a bargain. It's a giveaway. Whoever's been selling this stock, I know exactly who it is. I know exactly who's been selling this stock. There has not been a single institutional seller of any of these shares to any, to anyone else. The top investors of this company, and I'm talking about the insiders, of the company who work there, and the top hedge fund managers, mutual funds, pension funds, 
uh, investment bankers who are sitting on millions and millions of shares of this stuff haven't sold a single piece of paper and are not going to. They're not going to sell any of this stuff off. The only stock that's trading right now is down to a narrow field of maybe 50 million shares that are out there flipping around like crazy, of which 30 million are day trading shares that flip, 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 just turn over, and maybe 20 million shares of the actual float that are trading hands held amongst a majority, maybe 95% held by individuals who borrowed money on margin to play this stock looking for a quick home run hit. Quick, when I mean quick, I mean one or two, three weeks of time. They were not here for six months or a year. They were here for a good time, short time, in and out, figuring 15, two, three months ago, 14, 15 dollars, last couple of weeks, 14, 15, 16 dollars, all the way up to 25, 30 bucks. They were looking for a double and they were leveraged to get it. They were leveraged into stock on margin as much as a three to one. They were leveraged into options like you cannot believe and they're getting wiped out. And what's happened in the last 12 hours since last night is these folks are realizing, oh my God, it's not going to 25, 30 bucks today. It's not happening. Uh, I'm getting my butt handed to me. I'm on the hook for hundreds of thousands of dollars that I borrowed, begged, stealed, whatever I did. I, I mortgaged everything to run this thing and I'm getting my ass handed to me. And they're getting knocked out. Their brokers are selling them out and they're gonna be blown away. The best thing to happen to SoFi is happening right now. This is the best thing. The institutional investors in New York and elsewhere are going, good, get rid of these guys. Get, get rid of these guys because these guys are a menace. They're an absolute pain in the ass. They're, they make liquidity look okay. They're great for order flow. Robin Hoods of the world love this, the order flow trading crap that goes on. But it, for average investors and long-term investors, these guys are a pain in the butt. They're a necessary evil because we're a publicly traded company. And so a publicly traded company is people can buy and sell their stock for whatever price they want to pay or sell it for. That's the beauty of a publicly traded stock. Right now, there are idiots out there who are selling at 1550, not realizing just how well this company is actually doing. They are short termers. They're not looking past this quarter. They're not interested in the upcoming NFL football season. This weekend, the first game is being played at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles in front of an audience. They are not interested in that. They're not interested in the Super Bowl. They're not interested in all the advertising the company is doing. They don't give a crap about all the businesses this company is involved with. They don't care. They don't care. They're like uh, they're like that guy Gerard on uh, The Future. When, uh, when uh, Harrison Ford says, I didn't kill my wife. And the guy goes, I don't care. That's exactly the investor that is selling the stock right now. They don't care. They have one mission, period. Trying to make money as quickly as possible on whatever is hot. It was Robin Hood last week. It was AMC a month and a half ago. It was GameStop in January, February, and March. These are the investors that are all over the place looking for the next hot deal. They've been involved in 20 different plays since January. This was play number 21. It didn't work out. Now, for some of them, maybe it did work out. Some of them might have been shorters. Some of them were put buyers. And it worked out spectacularly. This first hour is going to make a lot of guys a lot of money. And it's going to cost a lot of guys a lot of money because we open up for trading on the open market and options start to trade and away we go. But at the end of the day, the long-term holder of SoFi, the holders of SoFi would be about 90% of the investors aren't doing a damn thing. They're not going to sell anything at all. They might actually pick off some more. And we might find that in the next 24 to 72 hours, this to today, Monday, Tuesday, next week, shares of SoFi will shift from flippers to investors just on an ongoing basis. And this is the best thing to ever happen to SoFi because it's going to take this company in another direction entirely. It will allow, it will allow the shares to ultimately reach 25, 30, 35 a share sometime this year or higher because we have the bank charter announcement to still come out and we have each quarter coming up will allow the company to brag about not only the fact that they have a whole bunch of new people signing up every three every day they're signing up like crazy 
but the earnings that are coming in are no longer have to pay for going public six months ago, eight months ago, nine months ago. A year from now, there are no expenses attributable to going public in the last quarter. And so they can, in effect, just tell us the cost of being in business, how much they brought in, how much they spent, how they're doing. That's all they have to talk about. This past quarter, they had to talk about the cost of going public, the absolute ridiculous price they had to pay uh, among all the other companies that are out there in the, in the SPAC world that are all finding the exact same problem. They all have to disclose on their financials the SEC mandated rules of redefining all your numbers. Absolute horseshit is what it was. And uh, cost investors, those people who are there trying to protect, it cost you collectively hundreds of billions of dollars of money of money lost in paper because these shares were were targeted by short sellers and other opportunists going aha they have to declare all these losses the sec is going to make them declare all these losses these shares are going to be an easy target for us to short the bejesus out of and take advantage of because they're thinly traded they're new companies they're unknown we can really run these things down and in some cases they were very successful to protect the investors the SEC actually screwed the investors as the investors ultimately paid a massive price of market loss, of paper loss, courtesy of the Securities and Exchange Commission, which you cannot sue. You cannot call onto the carpet. You cannot talk to them. They don't take your call. There's nowhere for you to go. You have to take it. And a lot of you out there then say to me, oh, the system's rigged. It's all rigged. I can't, I can't make an honest. There's, it's not an honest market. Oh, well. Guess what? It, it is what it is, and you have to take a, a simple attitude. You either are a, you have to admit yourself, you're either a stock flipper, and you will take the gains and losses by being one of those, or you're a Warren Buffett. You're an investor, and you will wait it out, and you'll just sit back and say, I don't care what these assholes do at the SEC. I don't care what these guys do on the air, on television shows. I don't care what the bloggers say the bloggers do. I don't care what these guys I bought into a corporation and to a team of people who are running a corporation, and I believe that this company is going to grow and become profitable. And I'm prepared to give them all the time that's necessary because when, when it's ultimately coming out that they are right, <laughs> they are doing well, the shares will reflect the value of the company. Now, I've been yelling this message out on AMC and GameStop and all the other stocks that I follow relentlessly that sooner or later, some shares will trade at values that they're worth, and some shares like, like Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, Carnival, AMC, and others will trade at values they are worth. And you can agree or disagree with me all you want, whether he's right or not. But in the end, I know I'm right, because from 78 till now, that's how it works, and it isn't going to change. Um, and so here we are. Um, 40, uh, what is it, 26 minutes till the opening, if that's if I'm reading this right. We're going to open up in 26 minutes. Uh, SoFi has traded 1.7 million in the pre-market. It traded over 8 million last night when I shut my computer off in the after market. And I believe that of the 8 million that traded and the 1.7, let's call it 10 million approximately that have traded, I will bet you that only a million shares are actually changing hands. Actual shares, it's only a million. The rest of this volume, day traders, flippers, over and over and over again. Because why wouldn't you be a day trader in this market? If you could afford to buy a thousand shares of SoFi on margin for as low as five to seven thousand dollars, that's all you need to flip a thousand shares. You can buy a thousand shares at fifteen fifty and sell them at fifteen sixty. Uh, you're making a dime. That's $100 a flip every time. You can do that every five minutes, whether you're going from 1550 to 1560 or 1560 short, 1550 buyback, or you can do it with 5,000 shares at a time for a dime a shot, that's $500 a trade, or 10,000 shares at a time. Look at the volume. 10 million traded since last night's close. There is unbelievable volume going on here. And there are day traders, thousands of them, not one or two guys, Thousands of them globally on their phones, on their laptops, on their on their iPads, 
flipping this stock in and out, in and out, in and out. We can't play the options market. It's closed. So they're restricted to just the stock. Because we're dealing with the, the aftermarket last night and the pre-market right now, we're talking about only 5% of all the shares that could trade that are probably even trading right now, which means coming back down to the number, there aren't even a million shares tra available to trade with here. And so to manipulate this market with only a million shares that are floating around out there in innocent people's hands, and you've got a whole bunch of sharks sitting on billions of dollars of buying power because they've got hundreds of millions in cash plus hundreds of millions in margin on top of that to run this thing up and down like a yo-yo, we get these wild, crazy swings. And you have these pros, the professionals back in New York in their, in their ivory towers looking at this going, yeah, the kids are playing with the stock right now. The boys are playing with the stock in and out like, like, uh, like yo-yos up and down all around. That is over in 23 minutes or 33 minutes. That ends in 33 minutes because in 33 minutes, the market opens again. All 100% of eligible trading shares will start trading again. There are many, many investors who want to trade this stock who can't right now because they can't trade in the aftermarket. They can only trade in the regular market, depending on the brokerage firm you're with. So do not be surprised. Do not be shocked. Do not be overwhelmed with, with, uh, with incredible, oh my God, if you see the shares break 16 bucks in the first five minutes of trading, because bargain hunting will come in here in a big way from long-term investors who are going to pick this stuff up and just put it away. It's possible. Not going to guarantee it, but it is entirely possible that we may have five to 10 million shares trade in the first hour, and we could be at $16.50 to $17 in no time. Could be. Don't know if it will. Uh, we're going to find out just what how uh, how committed are the shareholders of this company? I mean, the majority, how committed are they really? Um, but I have a suspicion that uh, a whole bunch of guys got blown away last night and uh, they're, 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 they're nervous wrecks. They didn't sleep all night last night. They're still trading like crazy right now as nervous wrecks. They know they're gonna be sold out in the first five minutes this morning. There are sell orders that have been amassed by brokerage firms who are waiting for the opening to blow them out. And there could well be three to five million shares available for sale in the first five minutes with three to five million of buying lining up to take it. Around here, around 15, 50, 16, 15, 25, 16, 50, you, you name it. Somewhere around here, there's gonna be a massive amount of stock turning over and out go the flippers and in come other investors. Now, it might be a new group of flippers to a degree who are going, I'm I'm buying in at 1550. I'm loading up big time at 1550. And I'm out of here at 1650. I'm out of here in a buck. Oh, I'm long gone. Hopefully in, I'm gone in an hour. Where others are coming in going, hey, I'll buy this at 1525, 1550, whatever it is. Because th this is a $30 stock by the end of the year. So yeah, I I'm happy to pay for it. We'll find out. That's my, uh, that's my take on it this morning, folks. Uh, I'm just a guy in Creston, British Columbia, Canada, uh, sitting in his living room saying, hey, good morning. Welcome to the show. Uh, I try to explain the markets in plain English as best I can. I'm trying to give you my 40 odd years experience uh, that I've gone through. I've seen crap like this my entire career. Uh, and I've seen it on penny stock. I've seen it on all kinds of other stuff. I have forgotten most of my, uh, most of these shenanigans, but yeah, they all come back out. You, you remember, you remember. <clears throat> It's a new world, though, because when I started the broker in the brokerage business, there was no pre-market trading. There was no such thing as pre-market trading. We didn't have that in 79, 80, 81. We were all waited for 930 in the morning or whatever the amount, whatever the time was when the markets were open for business. And uh, the market trading began and we all looked at the ticker tape going across the big window up here, the big wall in front of our office what the hell was happening and brokers shared one coke machine each between them and they would spin it on little wooden lazy susan and uh, we would put in our quotes and we would yell across the room what was happening with various stocks the desk traders would yell out gm down a half a dollar ibm up a quarter we that would be going on all the time if a, a deal was being done a merger between company one and two that would be yelled out across the office as you're on the phone, you're going, hang on a second, what was that? Yeah, well, okay, oh yeah, I just heard a rumor. Uh, that's how we communicate. It was verbal. 
it came out over the ticker tape and we yelled it out to each other and then we called our key clients about it. Today, you can be on your, your uh, toilet holding your beautiful little telephone and you can get all the info that I'm just telling you about all on here. But unfortunately, all of you out there who are watching me, <laughs> if you're watching this guy, you don't have a stockbroker that's going to call you today. You don't have a financial advisor that's going to call you and tell you anything about what I've just talked to you about with regard to SoFi. You're on your own. You've got to figure it out all by yourself. And you have to find a way to control your panic and your emotions and your rage and your anticipation and everything that's within you. You've got to figure out a way to control yourself and calm the hell down. Because no broker will hold your hand today to guide you through the day like I would have back in the 80s. <laughs> I would have been calling you last night at home. I would have called you last night at home because I would have still been in the office at 1030 last night, 11 o'clock last night. I would have been there and Jen would have been feeding me coffee to keep me going so I could call you last night and let you in on what happened with SoFi. But there is, that doesn't happen anymore. There are no stockbrokers left like, like I was a stockbroker back in the day. Some people say good riddance to that because that was a lousy system. Others go, you know, it wasn't all bad. It may have been a lot slower, but boy, we at least had someone to inform us as to what the heck was happening. I could have at least called people I knew back in the day in the middle of the night to say, hey, listen, what's going on with this deal? What happened with that deal? Sorry to bug you. Don't worry. I'm not sleeping either. <laughs> Let's compare notes. And away we go. But today it's, it's just right here. You're, you're stuck with this guy in, the, in a living room in Creston for some of the information you want. I'm not sure if it's all of it. Um, the rest of it, you got to figure it out yourself. And unfortunately, for a lot of you out there, you are looking at articles on the Internet trying to find the truth as to what's going on and where have you stumbled into conspiracy theory websites uh, where you're getting crap that just makes no sense whatsoever from people who have no street cred, no no uh, way of, of uh, verifying these guys. You can do no due diligence on these people. Good luck with all that. And there you have it. Welcome to the today's world. That's the price we pay for freedom. Freedom to do whatever you want. Yeah, well, you, you want to have freedom to do whatever you want. You're on your own. And uh, now you've got to, you're as good as your broker. And guess who your broker is? You. That's as good as you're going to get it um, because you don't have $5 million dollars to walk into Chase, uh, to a Chase branch, or to a Merrill Lynch branch, or Bank of America branch, or wherever, and sit down and say, I'd like to talk to someone about investing. Uh, no one's gonna talk to you uh, for more than 15 minutes about investing unless you've got serious money. And 99% um, of you that, that are out there, and I'm sure 100% of you that watch me, do not have a billion dollars lying around or 20 million lying around to throw into the market. You're small investors, you're trying to figure out what the heck is happening and why, and here we are trying to figure it out together. There you go. Uh, the Dow is up 69 points in the pre-market right now with 26 minutes to go. S&P is up 3.9. NASDAQ is down 3. And uh, we're looking at SoFi right now at 15.48. Last trade, uh, we've been watching it between, say, 15.40 and 15.65 or so. 1.9, 2 million traded now. 2 million shares traded at this point in time on SoFi. That's what I've got here from my angle on SoFi. I don't like the fact the stock's where it is, but I have to say, I did see one analyst say last night, this thing has an unbelievable wall of support at the $15 level. It's it's huge. It, it looks like the stock cannot be broken down there, can't be broken below. This stock is not going to $9 a share or $5 a share. It's not going to be an ATIP. It's not a company that's misleading its investors. This is not a company that's under investigation with the SEC. They've done nothing wrong. They're reporting the facts. And the fact is that out of 10 measurements that you want to use to measure the success of this company, nine of them are exceeding expectations. They have not disappointed the street with nine of 10 metrics. There's one metric where some analysts are jumping on these guys and are trying to paint a picture of woe and despair and oh, cry a tear. Earnings per share had to be stated as a loss because they had to write off. They had to, they could not not avoid it. They had to do a write off of all the costs to go public 
including all the SEC crap that uh, was thrown on everybody in the last four or five months. That's what some people are reacting to, which is ignorant as get up because these folks obviously don't know what they're talking about. They don't have a clue how the markets work. Uh, they don't understand anything about the SEC filing structure. And uh, they're jumping on SoFi because, oh, you lost money like you weren't supposed to lose money. Idiots, if you believe these guys, you're in trouble. You are in big trouble because you are going to be influenced by some scary people out there that don't even deserve to be alive in this business. They have no business being here. But, hey, it's a free country down in the USA. Uh, the rest of the world, yeah, we're kind of free. Um it's up to you to decide who you believe and who you don't believe and what you're going to do not going to do. The, at the end of the day, the market will not lie. The stock market will not lie at the end of the day. Is today the end of the day? Nope. Today is just another day in the long life of the public stock markets. And at this moment in time, right now, today, August the 13th at 6.07 a.m. in the morning here in Creston, 9.07 New York time, the shares of SoFi are 1544 to 1550 on the pre-market. That's where they are. That's undeniable. It is undisputable. Can't hide it. Can't sugarcoat it. That's where it's at. It is the pre-market. We have flippers all over the stock right now. We've got guys going long and short like you cannot believe all over this paper. Hundreds of them are flipping this stuff, maybe thousands. Most of us aren't doing a dang thing. I don't own any shares, so I can't. Most of you are sitting there going, what's going to happen? What's this thing going to open at? Um, what should I do? My advice to any of you, uh, if you want any, pick some of this stuff up. <laughs> if you see it cheap, pick it off. If you see your contract, you see your option contracts at un unbearably juicy prices, pick some up. Uh, if you can pick off 1250 calls, $15 calls, great. Um, if you can pick off the stock down in the 15s, fabulous. And just be prepared to wait days or weeks for a payoff because you're going to get one. In my opinion, you're going to get one. But you got to endure the opening. You got to endure the next uh, 22 minutes. And then you got to endure all day today with all of its highs and lows and tribulations and speculation and everything else. And there will those out there who will say, Bruce, you're absolutely right. Others will say, Bruce, you're absolutely wrong. That's okay. That's, uh, what, what? that's how this world works. Uh, some believe it, some don't. That's the way I see it. Anyway, that's the way I see it from over here. I welcome you to the show. I welcome you to my channel today. Uh, thank you for hanging around. Um, let's see how the markets are going to work today. Uh, I've noticed Sextera is up four cents to ten oh six. Um, I noticed. Uh, let's see if I get any other quotes for you. Matterport. Uh, I'm showing at fifteen oh nine, down twenty five cents on six thousand shares. Um, GameStop. I thought I saw this morning. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, one uh, one sixty two twenty on GameStop down 15 cents. I just read, as I was coming on the air, I was reading a Wall Street Journal article about Ryan Cohen. Fantastic article, absolutely beautifully written, a very uh, great piece on him and GameStop in a chronological sequence, talking about how he got involved and what he's doing and how he's doing what he's doing. I liked it. I, I thought, yeah, this, this, some research has been done here. Um, I will say, though, that, uh, that uh, the article uh, made a kind of a big to do about how uh, back in uh, I think it was December. I think it was December when when Mr. Cohen began to um, began to talk to the company. He was already talking to the board of directors through conference calls and so on. They the company wanted to um, uh, make an emergency filing. Well, not, maybe that's the wrong word. Uh, make a filing with the SEC to allow the company to raise $100 million in cash if they felt they needed it. And Cohen so, said to them, not a good idea. Not a good idea to try to raise $100 million right now um, because the shares are so volatile. And some of the board of director members were wondering, well, shit, if we did this, would this be a problem? Because we might have a, an issue here with um, legals. Um, if we're seen perceived to be issuing stock at whatever price uh, per share, there might be some lawsuits if the shares you know, ever went down from here, if these elevated levels, if the shares went down, that could be, uh, you know, we could be perceived as, as, as hoodwinking the public by trying to sell a bunch of stock from our treasury at ridiculous prices. If they crash back to where they used to be, which is three to five dollars a share, we might have legal problems. And this hundred million is, is nothing. 
course, in my humble opinion, I was yelling at my computer um, in January, February, raise a billion dollars. Don't raise a hundred million, raise a billion dollars. They want to give it to you. That would never have allowed, the stock would never have gone back to 50 bucks a share. Had they raised a billion at two or three hundred dollars a share on the way up, the stock wouldn't have gone under a hundred ever because the, the, the stock, the company would be worth uh, $70 a share cash. I mean, there's no way it would have gone back to 38, but they raised nothing. It did go back, then it came back on again, as we all know. Anyway, this is a fascinating article. They did mention at the end of this article that the company did raise money, uh, $1.9 billion eventually by selling stock. And they kind of uh, put a little dagger into, into uh, into Mr. Cohen saying, ah, oh, yeah, you know, you, you, you told the company not to raise a hundred million. Oh, you went out there and raised 1.9 billion. Yeah, that's right. He did. And, uh, and I'm glad he did. And I'd like to see him raise another $1.9 billion around here. I would be delighted if he raised another 1.9 billion sitting on 4 billion in cash, no debt, uh, not even 80 million shares outstanding. That would be wonderful. That is 50 bucks a share in cash for this company that they'd be sitting on. Uh, losing a hundred million a year, they'd have 50 years of life. <laughs> uh, or is it 500? I can't even, I can't do the math. It, it's too many zeros. Yeah, I'd be fine by me. But and in any event, uh, we're sitting on about 2 billion cash right now. No debt. I like it. And uh, I think the, the upside of GameStop is phenomenal. Uh, but in any event, I found the article fascinating and interesting and unique. Um, it's not a it's not a buy recommendation. It's not a sell recommendation. It's just a here's the situation with Cohen, the company, what's happened, the changes, where it is now compared to where it was before. And when you read that, you read it, you go, you know, this is pretty good. Uh, this this company has completely changed itself in a year uh, because a year ago uh, uh, in in August of, of 2020 versus today, uh, this company is a whole lot different. August 2019 today? Oh, you don't recognize it. It's, it's unrecognizable. Uh, yeah, there's there's change. I think changes for the better uh, for shareholders. Yeah, I think changes for the better for shareholders. And uh, I think there's a lot uh, a lot of neat stuff coming up. Anyway, that's just that's just me. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Thank you all of you today for uh, hanging out with yours truly this morning and listening to my rant today. Uh, I hope I didn't make you uh, too upset out there. Hope I didn't uh, didn't dissuade you from wanting to be an investor. Um, hopefully you uh, you take my comments in stride and uh, you understand that it's just a guy with his opinion and uh, we like to hear his take on it and uh, we hear others and we make up our minds as to who to believe and who not to believe. It's all cool. Thank you all for uh, su supporting this channel, however you do it, uh, with thumbs ups. Two hundred and eight already this morning. I appreciate this. We're 16 minutes away from the opening. We have 210 thumbs ups already in the house here. If you're able to throw a thumbs up from our direction, there are at least 560 of you that have not given me a thumbs up for sure because there's 212 here and there's 760 of you watching. So I know for a fact that 700, 550 of you could help out. If some of you out there would be kind enough to hit the thumbs up button for us, that would really help because the uh, thumbs up uh, analytics computers at, uh, at YouTube really jump on this and start to recommend channels that get good engagement. So thank you for helping this channel get discovered and noticed by people who don't even know I'm here talking about what I'm talking about. Uh, thank you all. Uh, those of you who are members of this channel, I cannot emphasize enough how much I appreciate you. Um, I am amazed uh, when I watch other YouTubers how they don't even mention you guys. Uh, they don't even mention the fact that they have a membership opportunity. They just don't talk about it. They, they, they have a little join button down there under their picture or whatever. And you're supposed to figure it out. I, I cannot, um, I, 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 it, is, it is unfathomable to me that I would not thank you for being a member of this channel. Every single show I do, a show, every show I make, I, I cannot not understand why others wouldn't thank you for being members. I really appreciate it. Being a member of this channel means you can comment on my live shows, use emojis. You'll get updates from time to time from yours truly. I do appreciate it. Those of you who are not members, please become a member of this channel. Join this family. We'd love to have you. Um, uh, the more members this channel has, the stronger it gets. 
And the less emphasis I have, the less need I have to pay attention to any of the probably dozens of weekly offers that I receive from um, entities that want me to uh, take on sponsorship. I am approached every day, uh, many times by bogus, pure, you know, pure artificial uh, entities. And every week I'm approached by legitimate companies for sponsorship opportunities where I will sell myself out and, and uh, talk to you folks about, you know, do this or sell this, buy this, buy that. Uh, I have yet to been appro be approached by the company I would love to be approached by, which is the Coca-Cola Corporation. I would love to be approached by these guys uh, because I have no problem in promoting this product because I drink it. <laughs> But uh, I get a lot of um, uh, companies contacting me and a lot of individuals contacting me to literally have me promote something for them for money. And um, I've held back doing that on this channel. I really have. I've held it back because my memberships that I have are a big part of this channel's success of its cash flow. Um, I don't make a lot of money from advertising on YouTube. You can notice that if I have 746 people sitting here right now watching me live, uh, I'm not going to get a lot of advertising money from any brands out there because it's not like I got 25,000 of you sitting here for five hours a day. It's just not the case. And so I'm on my own as an individual entrepreneur talking to you folks and hopefully, hopefully being able to provide you with an angle of this market that allows you to absorb it and kind of get a handle on just what the heck is going on. Um, I'm also free to speak my mind because I'm not sponsored by anybody. <laughs> That's the other advantage for me. I can just tell you what I think about whatever I think about. And I don't have to worry about, oh, my advertiser might not like that. Um, uh, hell with those guys. <clears throat> and so, again, I thank you for becoming members of this channel. Because <clears throat> by being a member of this channel, you are freeing me up to just cover the markets as I see them. <clears throat> and you can decide for yourself whether I'm right or not, uh, whether you want to go with that flow or not. Thank you. For those of you who have subscribed to this channel, I thank you. Uh, thank you for subscribing to this channel. It means a lot to me. Um, we have lost probably 12,000 subscribers since March the 19th. I know exactly what day. Since March the 19th, we have lost at least 12,000 subscribers because I have upset at the minimum that many people, maybe more. I may have upset triple that number of people with my personal opinions on the markets. And uh, a lot of people accuse me of being a political hack when I'm just reporting on the markets. A lot of people accuse me for being a shill because I'm commenting on how I see the markets. And this channel grew very quickly from January and February to March to reach 106,000 plus subscribers because a lot of people who came into this channel thought that I was the new stock guru for day trades. And uh, for whatever reason, they thought it. I couldn't help them. They joined, they popped in here, uh, became subscribers. And uh, when I, as time went on and I became more comfortable behind this camera, covering the markets on a daily basis, truly you know, revealed what I think is going on and what I see going on. A lot of people went, hey, that's that's not what I want to hear. I, I want to hear, I want to hear talk that makes me excited to flip stock all the time. And um, I'm not that guy. And so uh, 12,000 people have taken the time to figure out how to get rid of me, get unsubscribed. Uh, probably 25,000 just don't watch me anymore. And uh, they're subscribers in theory, but in reality, they don't watch the channel. It's all right. That's the beauty of YouTube. Any of us can subscribe to any channel we want and watch or not. It's totally up to us. I'm guilty of the same thing. I have subscriptions, I'm sure, that I've taken on channels that I don't watch. I haven't watched in months. That's YouTube. That's how it is. It's all fine. Uh, thank you, those of you who are subscribing, who are here every day. I love you. Jen loves you. My, my Jennifer Anson lookalike wife. We love the folks, the fact that you're all with us. And uh, we're excited for the future. We have big changes coming up here. Uh, personally, for Jennifer and I, we are about to become nomads. We listed our house. Uh, it's up for sale starting this weekend, I guess. And uh, we may be out of here in as quick as a five to seven, eight weeks, we could be out of here. And uh, we will be homeless. We will not be moving into another home uh, right away. We will be traveling for a while. And so we'll be on the road 
uh, all over the place. And so some of you might get a knock in the middle of the night on your front door, or you might get a text on your phone where there's a mysterious car parked across the street and you're going to go, who, who's this text? Uncle Bruce. He, what? You're across the street from our house and you need a place to stay. Uh, you never know. Uh, you never know who's going to show up at your door. <laughs> Looking for a handout. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, I'd, got, I'd have to get the camera rolling. Uh, I'd have to have the camera rolling if I ever did something like that. Anyway, we've got big changes coming for this channel, and I invite you to stick around with us and enjoy the ride. We're going to be all over the world in travel, starting with the United States of America, our favorite place, uh, the USA. Other than Canada, we love America. We have so many Americans that we got to check up on and see how they're doing. We haven't been to America in a long time. It's been too long. Can't wait to get going on that, and I look forward to uh, visiting with you. We will organize meet and greets in certain cities. We will organize group cruises on cruise ships because I have a travel channel as well. Um, and you'll be invited along if you'd like to join us. Um, we'll let you know. And if you're able to swing by and say hi to us, that would be fabulous. Uh, so folks, stick around. Uh, we're going to be busy here this next uh, several uh, months through all of winter into next year as this channel evolves and as, these, as, as the two of us become roadies, as we become traveling nomads with uh, with this guy sitting on two YouTube channels. Oh, if I got stuff to worry about, yeah, I got stuff to worry about. So it should be a lot of fun, and uh, we'll see how it goes. We're eight minutes away or so from the opening of our day today. The Dow is up 70, the S&P is up four and a half, NASDAQ up six, crude oil down nine cents a barrel. This weekend, I'm doing two classes. Saturday coming up, noon Eastern time, I will be live conducting a class. If you'd like to become a student, to want to be in the classroom with us, send me a private email saying, Bruce, I would like to be uh, in your class uh, for Saturday or for Sunday. Saturday's class at 12 noon Eastern is basically, um, <laughs> this is funny. Um, uh, Bruce's class on Saturday will be um, how to trade a butterfly call and put options. We're going to be talking about these these uh, different butterfly strategies that are out there. There's a whole bunch of them. This is going to take over two hours. I will be explaining this in plain English. And I practiced last night with Jennifer showing her, I think this is how I should do it. What do you think? And, and we went over all kinds of scenarios because this could be very complicated. It can be very simple. We will get into this and look forward to it. Um, and let's see what happens. Um, um, on Sunday, the class that I'm going to be conducting is going to be called, How Does Uncle Bruce Pick His Stocks? So a lot of you have asked me from, for the months now, how do you pick stocks to invest in? How, how did you ever do this over all the years you were a broker? And I will be, uh, I will be taking care of this um, uh, on Sunday. We'll be going over this, all right? We have a uh, unique scenario happening here right now. We have a, uh, we just had an individual become a new member of this channel and immediately start posting uh, troll hate messages. Uh, so in reality, uh, what this individual did is he had to pay a f the fee to become a member of the channel and then immediately start posting hate, hate troll messages right away. And of course, I immediately block the individual from the channel and say, thanks for the money. Uh, thanks for your one message. And now, uh, you know, move on. Uh, that's what's going on. Um, it's uh, happening time and time again. Um, YouTube has this uh, glitch in its system where YouTube cannot, uh, for whatever reason, does not block people like this from uh, doing what they're doing. And so we get these haters that come in here uh, because for whatever reason, my opinion is not welcome to members of my own channel. I can't, it's apparently, I am not allowed to talk to my own viewers about my personal opinion on a free platform like YouTube. Um, and so people want to attack my, uh, my message. Here it is again. Uh, they want to uh, absolutely attack this, uh, this YouTuber in any way, shape or form that they can. Um, and that is how this game works. Uh, and YouTube, whatever reason does not stop this pattern from happening ever it uh, it, it never it never stops it just keeps coming on and on again and again and again so i thank all of you who are legitimate viewers of this channel who are interested in my opinion 
Uh, I appreciate it. Um, but um, uh, unfortunately, there are those out there who are absolutely determined to put the hate on uh, in any way, shape or form, uh, to, thinking that they will make a difference, that they actually will influence you folks to believe in these um, stupid troll messages. Uh, it is what it is, and uh, I have to, uh, I have to try to battle it as best I can. Anyway, there you go. Another day in the life of a YouTuber. I'm not the only one. Uh, don't worry. I'm not crying because I'm all by myself. I'm the only one being attacked. We're all being attacked. We as creators are attacked all the time. The amount of uh, of, of, uh, s of scary messages we receive in our emails, the number of uh, of uh, threats we get, uh, is is shocking. Is, is shocking. And yet, what am I talking about here? talking about the stock market it's all i'm trying to talk about is the stock market and uh we get this uh, absolute endless attack on this uh, on this channel um because i want to talk about the stock market <laughs> so ah uh, there you have it folks uh you gotta let it go and you just gotta kind of move on best you can 1539 on sofi on 2.7 million shares we're opening in three minutes get ready for the beginning of the markets we're going to see how these uh, shares do for us Again, thank you. Uh, join us Saturday if you like. Uh, if you want to join us Saturday, send me a private email message. Say, Bruce, would love to uh, would love to be in your uh, in your class. Uh, here's the message. Just send me a message saying, Bruce, I'd love to be in your Saturday class. Love to be in your Sunday class, or like to be in both. Please send me an invite. We'll send you a registration invite. And uh, all you need to do is, is uh, just uh, fill that info in. Send us some money. You're on your way. You're in the class, and uh, we'll get you on. And uh, that'll be Saturday, Sunday for a couple of hours. You can ask all the questions you want. Uh, you'll be able to um, uh, be able to uh, participate in the class. You will then receive uh, after the uh, the classes are edited. <clears throat> we post them on our website. You will then get a link to the uh, the edited version of the class for your viewing pleasure. All you want, and you get to do that. Those of you who are not here in the live class. Go to stockmarketswithbruce.ca. That's the name of my website, stockmarketswithbruce.ca. Head over there. You can watch right now classes one through eight at your leisure anytime you want. You can order them individually and enjoy each class. They're about an hour and 40 to two hours long, each one edited. And uh, knock yourself out. Uh, you'll learn all about option writing, buying and selling strategies spreads, uh, <clears throat> all kinds of stuff. And uh, more classes are coming on more topics. And if you have any specific uh, kind, of, kind of topics you'd like me to cover, let me know. Send me an email if you can. Uh, that would be the best way to do it. And say, well, I'd sure love to see a class about this topic or about that topic. Just let me know and we'll take it from there. We are one minute away from opening the day. Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? We're going to find out in just a minute. I'm uh, going to see what happens. Uh, what can I say? Every every minute or so, you've got this moron throwing this same message up again and again. It's a it's a robot. It's a bot. Um, it's coming from uh, Bulgaria, Romania, Hungary, uh, Kazakhstan, Kurdistan, something, something Stan. Uh, they just pop up, they pop up, they pop up, they pop up again and again and again. And there's absolutely nothing YouTube will do about it. And it just won't stop. And there it is. If those of you out there can report this guy, I would appreciate it. Uh, if you're able to report this uh, individual, that would be a wonderful thing. Uh, the reports against this individual would be really appreciated. Uh, YouTube may or may not do something about it then. We'll see what happens. All right. Well, let's look for the opening and uh, try to uh, survive it, uh, we hope. Uh, let's find out what this market has in store for us this morning. As we are opening up for the day, the bell's ringing in New York here, so we got to be trading. Where are we at right now? I'm showing, uh, I'm showing right now that uh, the hood, Robin Hood, is down 309 to 4810. I believe that is a current price. Double check. No, 4845 up 30, 45 cents, 35 cents. SoFi 1536 officially on the opening on uh, down 210 on 3.8 million. The entire. Uh, the entire um, um, uh, uh, what's I'm looking for sellout has been ar arranged. 3.8 million shares of sellouts were done right off the bat by Wall Street, probably against a whole bunch of flippers 
that got their butts handed to them, and one of them might be trolling me right now. Um, <clears throat> my hunch now is, uh, for a fact, I know this. The stock is down more than 10% right now, which means it's on a, on a short sale restricted list. So you cannot, you cannot uh, short the stock today or tomorrow under the typical short selling rules. That eliminates that, all right? So 1531 last trade, uh, low of the day on SoFi 1521. It's now 1531 on 5 million shares traded. Wouldn't be surprised, as I said earlier, up to 10 million will trade in the first hour easily. Uh, that could easily happen. Most of those will be blowouts, but there are day traders all over this right now. This is a day trader's paradise. There is huge volume going on, a lot of speculation going on, and there will be volatility all day today. Uh, Matterport up a penny to 15.35. AMC down 78 cents. ATIP down seven cents. GameStop down a buck 68. 23Me down three. Fifth Wall up four. Now down 12. Vector debt up three cents. Navsite up four cents. Sextera unchanged at the moment. IBM breaking hearts with a 47 cent loss to 142.60 right now. That's what we got. Uh, the Dow's up 49 points. Uh, on one market, I'm showing it up 77 on the other. Who do you believe? Um, we're showing now both markets showing 47 point gain on the day. S&P up three, NASDAQ up one point at this point in time. There it is. That's where we're at right now. SoFi, 15.25 at this moment in time on <clears throat> 5.68 million shares traded. Uh, the low of the day, 15.21. High of the day, 15.53. And right now, 1523 uh, last trade, uh, and this is changing a lot. It is really jumping all over the place, folks. Be, uh, be get ready for this uh, for quite a while here as everything settles out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, other than that, tw um, uh, Matterport at 1540 up six cents. Volume so far in Matterport is 96,000 shares. Absolutely dead quiet. GameStop at 160.55 down a dollar 80 on a volume of 34,000 shares. Nothing going on on GameStop today. 15.30 on your SoFi right now. Um, as I said earlier, if you scoop some, great. If you're thinking it might go lower, you might be right. You might try 15.01, 15.06, just a little higher than those nice round numbers. Maybe 14.91, maybe 14.81, maybe 14.76, 14.71. You might try. If it does come down and comes to you, it comes to you. I don't know if it will. Uh, we've traded now on the day in SoFi in three minutes, 6.29 million shares of stock. 15.26 last trade uh, to start the morning low of the day, 15.21. Couldn't even hit 15.20 or lower on the opening. Interesting how that's going. Here it goes with another another attack. Here they are. Hooey, hooey, another attack from the moron. Uh, there you have it. Folks, welcome to the markets and my life. Uh, Robin Hood, 49.25, up $1.15. SoFi at 15.26, right now 15.27. It's GameStop, 160.45, down buck ninety. ATIP down $0.08. Cents. AMC down $0.75. Cents. Matterport up $0.17 cents to 15.51 at the moment. Uh, volume now, at, it's now 15.53, up 19. Volume, 121,000. Matterport higher at 15.53 right now. 23andMe down three cents. Fifth wall down 12. Vector acquisition down a penny. <clears throat> Navsite up four cents. Sixter up a penny. IBM breaking hearts down 30 cents. Dow up 63. <clears throat> there we have it. That's where we're at right now, folks, on this early morning. Uh, uh, Royal Caribbean down eight cents. Amazon down 8.90. Facebook down 54 cents. Google down 45 cents. There's nothing going on. It's, it's absolutely quiet. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Fantastic. I'm um, looking forward to seeing you, Catherine. We'll, we'll get you into that. Uh, we'll, we got you booked in there. We'll hang out together. Looking forward to that. Thank you, Catherine, very much. <clears throat> Alrighty. Uh, thank you all for hanging around, uh, tolerating the troll today. Uh, he's around here somewhere. The 13-year-old is back. Uh, what can I say? Yeah, I am looking pretty good for 1929. Don't you think? I, I mean, not bad. I mean, you know. I, <clears throat> Considering that's uh, how many years ago, and it's, it's you know almost 100 years old. I guess I'm doing all right. Um, the SoFi 1518 under more pressure. 1515. Here we go. Another little selling wave coming in. I was expecting this. Uh, 7.6 million traded. 1516, 1514, 1512. If you put in some buy orders, you might get lucky here. 
you might get lucky and scoop some of this stuff up. Uh, keep your eye on it, 1520 right now. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm uh, going for 8 million plus volume right at the moment, 7.96 million. Again, anyone who's being blown out here is probably being blown out here without wanting to be. They're probably being involuntarily blown out. And I say good riddance. Uh, you're getting knocked out. Too bad. Uh, flippers, uh, move on. Investors, come on in. Uh, 15, 16 to 15, 17, 15, 22 now. Jumping about here a bit. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what's going on. Uh, tons of fun. <clears throat> and Yeah, notorious swindling with Uncle Bruce. Notice how I'm swindling you right now. I'm just telling you how the market's doing. Telling you in plain English what I think is going on, and I'm the swindler. <laughs> yeah, Robin Hood, they're fine. Oh, there's nothing to see here at Robin Hood. They're okay. They're, you know. The fact that they halt stocks, they're fine. It's oh, it's the swindler on the YouTube channel. That's the guy you got to watch out for. He is a sneaky bugger. <clears throat> All right, uh, 1524 now on SoFi, down 20, 222. How long will it last under 16 before it takes off? It should be kind of fun. 272,000 share buy order on the buy side on SoFi at 15. Interesting. 50 more SoFi for me. Ah, there you go. Um, <laughs> uh, Robinhood is the only one that's up along with uh, Matterport was up. And now it's down a nickel. So, yeah, Robinhood is the only winning stock on the exchange. Don't you find that a bit odd? <laughs> The Robin Hood is the only stock going up. Uh, isn't that the strangest thing? Uh, man, you you think I own it. I mean, look at that troll who's attacking me. You think I own Robin Hood. Uh, maybe I do. Maybe secretly I do own Robin Hood. And this is just a front. I'm some guy in Creston pretending to be in a little town in Canada. And on the side, I control Robin Hood, pull all the strings, make all the stocks go down and make my stock go up. I'm a genius. I'm a... I'm like the uh, the wizard in the Wizard of Oz. I'm behind the curtain pulling all the strings. <laughs> I love the smell of napalm in the morning. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. This is fun. Uh, 1529 on SoFi. It got as low as 15. What was that? 14 or something? Did it touch 15? 1512. Touch 1512. Now at 1528. Well, there you go, kids. Uh, are you Vlad's uncle? Eh, maybe I'm Vlad's uncle. Uh, uncle Bruce the Puppeteer. Yes, yes, that's right. I like that the troll is old-timey. I, I like that. He's an old-timey troll. He, he doesn't talk like the kids. Yeah, this, this troll is, is older. Maybe maybe he's maybe 17 instead of 13. I don't know. Um, <laughs> 15, 23, 24 on SoFi. GameStop down a buck eighty-five, and ATIP down a dime. Uh, AMC down thirty-two cents. Uh, Matterport down a nickel. What a disaster! Oh, we're down pennies all over the place. Over the place. Oh no, the world is ending. Oh, uh, we're up. We're up thirty-seven on the Dow. We're up 0 0.8 on S&P. We're down nine points on Nasdaq. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> well, let's see. Um, yes, I'd be pretty impressed if Unc Uncle Bruce says Kaiser Sose to us. That's right, Kaiser Sose. That I love that movie. Uh, the Usual Suspects, great movie. Oh, that was a good movie. Love that. Uh, yes. Uh, what can I say? Um, <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Uh, Michael uh, Bruce, do you think the EPS of SoFi was hurt by the reclassification of warrants as a liability and the buyout of Galileo? Aren't these one-time cost? Why earnings per share the only view for? I agree. Uh, that's exactly what it is. The cost of going public. The, uh, the absolute ridiculousness of all the SEC rule changes uh, ma made SoFi, they had to reinstate financials like every other company. All companies going through the SPAC system, all of them, the private companies and the public companies, when merged, they have to, re they have to bring out all these expenses that weren't actually expense. They're just paper adjustments. And there are those out there in the market that actually believe that, oh, well, they're losing this much per share. They're a garbage company. And, and there's, there's the extent of their due diligence. They have no clue how the markets work. It's zero. But then again, they weren't stockbrokers. They're never going to be a stockbroker. They never took the securities course. They're never going to take the securities course. They couldn't pass the securities course if they had to take the securities course. And millions and millions of people are sucked in by these guys. 
what can I say? Am I the best out there? No, I'm just a guy. I'm doing all I can. So far, 1506. Here we go. 1506 now, 1509. There will be wave after wave of selling for a while. This first hour will be the Wild West. We're at 10 million traded now. I'm figuring easily 10 million in the first hour, maybe 20. Let's flush them out right here, right now. Get them out of here. 1512 is the last trade on SoFi. There it is, uh, 23 and me at 777, down 16 cents. Fifth wall down 12 to 12.36. Vector down four to 10.50. Nav site up three cents to 9.67. Sixtera down two cents at $10 a share. Uh, we've got Robinhood up 232 at 50.42. SoFi 15.12, 15.11, down 234. GameStop at 160.35 right now. That's where we're at. Uh, down two dollars on the GameStop. ATIP down nine cents. AMC down forty-five. Matterport down eighteen cents to fifteen sixteen a share right now. Matterport volume today, by the way, one hundred eighty-seven thousand shares. No one's paying attention to it because the star of the show is SoFi. The star of the show is SoFi at fifteen oh eight, fifteen oh six right now. That is the star of the show. As if the stock market is completely wrong because of SoFi. It's like SoFi is the problem today. They're, they're the game, they're GameStop today. SoFi is your daily GameStop stock today and that everyone wants to pick on them. I think this is a bargain here at 1509, 07, whatever. These, these prices, this is ridiculous. But hey, let get them out of there. Let's get rid of whoever has to be got, gotten rid of. That's fine by me. 11.1 .1 million traded. I am sure there are shorters and longers and flippers everywhere all over this baby it is wild it is wacky and uh, that's what we got going today 1506 1507 right now on sofi uh trading absolutely crazy 1502 i'm showing now 1502 as it's going to be a shot down to 15 they're going to try to break it some some shorters are going to try to break the 15 dollar level they're going to attack it as hard as they can can they hit them all can they hit them all fast enough? 1501, can they blow out all the buy orders and try to drop this to 14 and a half or 1420 or 1470? I don't know. 1502, uh, there's a war going on here and there's big money trading hands. 11.6 million now. If you figure out that uh, that's $15 a share average or so and 11 million traded, uh, that's a lot of money changing hands here. A ton of money, fifteen of dollars, even on SoFi right now. They've taken out the O ones, O twos, all the the little small orders that just ahead of fifteen are now hitting the bid at fifteen, trying to crack the market at fifteen. They'll likely do it if there's enough power behind them, but for how long? That's what I wonder about. Uh, let's see, fifteen oh one. Did we trade under fifteen? Not yet. Still showing fifteen as the low trade. Fifteen oh one last trade. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Um, fun times at the OK Corral this morning. Uh, Matterport up, up, Henny, turn green. Uh, my levers are working. Uh, I'm that conniving little guy behind the curtain. I got Matterport up two cents now. Yay! Uh, SoFi at 15.15.01. <clears throat> right now, SoFi volume now, 13.1 uh, million. You think this is natural selling? Think again, there is nothing natural going on here. It's pure manipulation of the stock. 1495 last trade. Why would someone try to crap their own market? Why would they want to do that? They don't. 1494. It's being done on purpose. Um, the stock is on a short sale restriction, as far as I, I believe, but I'm not sure if NASDAQ has that rule. Does NASDAQ have a 10% short sale short sale restriction in place? I don't actually know. Anyway, they are. Uh, 50, I got filled at 1503, says uh, Publis. Way to go. Um, there, there was 200,000 shares buy at 15. It's gone. Um, how do you put all the strings when you're only four foot eight? How do you do that? Magic. It's magic. Oh, yes. 1503 on the stock. Yep. I'm so, I'm so sneaky. Uh, 1499. I'm filled. I got filled at 1499. Way to go. <clears throat> uh, One million shares a minute right now. <clears throat> 1501. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. What else is going on? I'm filled. I got it. Uh, 15.03 right now uh, on the volume for SoFi. We are showing now 14 million shares. Uh, we are going a million a minute right now. That is $15 million a minute of stock 
trading hands on SoFi if I've got my numbers right. Wow, yeah, we got we got action here. Um, let's see, it's a wild times. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, what can I say? Uh, my buyer, I got one at fourteen ninety. Um, fourteen ninety one might have been a better way to do it. Be an odd number buyer. Don't be an even number buyer. But it's whatever. You get it. You get it. Uh, I said buy. Don't buy ATIP. Where's it at, bro? Um, I said ME not convincing. Uh, where is it at? Hey, Bruce, SoFi, October 15, 12 and a half for three. Bueno or no bueno? Um, uh, SoFi at 1250. Oh, I see. A 1250 call. Um, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, let's see now, 1502, 1504, 1505 right now on the stock. Uh, let's see, uh, uh, I just cracked a beer here. I need to numb my brain. <laughs> oh, man. Fanville, thank you uh, for this donation. I've been missing donations. I, and so I've seen them come through. I've missed them. I apologize. Morning, Albers. Just sold my SoFi $16 put, which I got just before the close yesterday. Two double profit ain't bad. There you go. You, you made a trade, and way to go. Take that money and run, run, run. I got 100 at 14.99. Um, and let's see, a splitter, Bruce. Don't miss my message. I want to buy a phone amplifier, and after that, three SoFi right on. <laughs> I bought Real Crib and puts when it was at 90. Where's it at, bro? Uh, where's it at? Uh, where is it? Where is it at right now? Uh, Royal Caribbean, 79.72, uh, down 62 cents. So. It's going much lower than that. Uh, 1503 on SoFi. Uh, yeah, why do you say odd prices? Because if you try to buy it at $15, there might be 50 buyers with you. If at 1501, there might only be three other buyers with you because people think in round numbers. So when you buy, you buy one penny ahead of a round number. When you sell, you sell one penny below a round number. So if the stock runs up and you, let's say it goes to 16 and you want out, sell at 1599. Don't sell at 16. You'll be with 50 other sellers. You might not get out. Uh, that's why you avoid round numbers. 1505 now on the stock. Uh, interesting trading pattern here. What a day. What a day. Uh, come on. Keep dropping so far, shorties. I'm loving it. There you go, Pat. You got it. 1507 right now. 15.0257. It's jumping about here. Volume now on SoFi, 14.4 million as far as I can tell you. Uh, Robin Hood still up a dollar sixty-five, but it's under fifty now. GameStop one sixty forty-nine down a buck eighty-six. ATIP down nine cents. Uh, AMC down twenty-eight cents. Matterport up two cents. Twenty-three me down twenty-two. Fifth Wall down seven. Vector up a penny. Navsite up a penny. Sextra down two. IBM breaking hearts with a thirty-seven cent loss so far this morning. Robin Hood just popped over fifty. My my levers are working again. I got Robin Hood over fifty. The magic that I conduct, I'm such a wizard. 1509 on SoFi, I'm making it go back up. <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Bro, Uncle Bruce, uh, I'll send a donation. Do you think shipping in Germany will work? Yes, it'll work with airmail. It'll arrive. Send it through PayPal. Make sure to give me your mailing address. It will arrive. Yeah, you let me know when you get it, too, of course. And if you'd like us to autograph it, you want me and Auntie Jen to autograph it, send us a note saying, we'd like it autographed, please. We'll take care of you. Uh, what else is happening here? Uh, man, oh, man, 1501 again, coming back down for another run. That's why 1501 is the price you pay, not 15. You get If it's coming to you, get hit first. Let the 15ers wait. You get filled first. It's only a penny. Don't worry about the penny. I've seen so many times. I, was, I wrote so many tickets in my early days where I missed out on trades because I was thinking nice round numbers. Uh, the guys who were veterans – who really knew what they were doing, they were the odd-numbered traders. They were the ones who were always getting fills, way more than I was, on the buy and the sell side. I learned that through hard knocks, let me tell you. Anyway, there it is, uh, 150, uh, uh, 50, 18 now, 50.18 on Hood, 160.59 on GameStop, 15.04 on SoFi, 15.05 on SoFi, volume now on SoFi, 15.7 million shares in... 20 minutes, uh, not quite a million a minute so far to start the day. Wow, that is something else. Crazy. Uh, yeah, what can I say? Uh, what else is going on? Uh, it's going to be a red whiny day today. Maybe not. Some of you are hilarious, says Michael. 1501, 1502 on, uh, on uh, SoFi right now. GameStop just popped to 161.04. Down only $1.32, getting a little better there. AMC coming up. It's only down $0.26. Cents. It's moving up. 
Matterport up a couple of pennies uh, at the moment. The Dow's up 71. Uh, still, it's backing off now. It's only up 61, but it, it had a, a, a down dip, then an up dip, now a little down dip. S&P up three. NASDAQ is positive with a point. Oil down 17 cents. There it is. What is happening? Uh, got exercised on a $16 cover call last Friday. Felt great to buy back in this morning. Made money on the premium, and now I'm buying back lower. Thanks for teaching me about writing these. Daniel, way to go, man. Way to go. Uh, broke average volume in under 15 minutes. Wow, awesome stuff. Um, here we go. Uh, Pat uh, Markley, Uncle Bruce, my wife and I bought a, a Class C Sprinter last year, and we've been all over the place. Uh, we just listed our house as well, and we're going on the road full-time within a few months. We love Key Largo. Right on, man. It's, it's a different life. It's, it's a whole different life, and less than, I'm sure, less than half of 1% or one-tenth of 1% of America knows it full-timing. Uh, Pat, you're in a world uh, completely uh, uh, different than anyone else, and I commend you, and I congratulate you, and I wish you nothing but the best. Way to go, man. This is this is such an awesome move. Um, got more SoFi, V-A-C-Q, A-T-I-P, Nash, and M-E today. Long-term, baby. There you go, Aaron. Well done. Laugh a lot. You hear, you, laugh a lot. you hear this. Against against me is green on 23Me. It's red for the year, but it's green, people. You shorted. You sure is the only way you can be green. Oh, my God, you're so dumb. Uh, okay, Cheddar, thank you for all the kind words. I think, I'm not sure. 15.03 uh, on SoFi, um, down 243 on the day. The low of the day, I think, has been 14.93. That's been the low trade of the day today. Uh, we're about 11 pennies higher than that. And uh, we are watching this market uh, with great interest. Um, uh, the Dow is up 91 again. Uh, S&P up six, NASDAQ now up two, so the markets are actually improving. On the big boards, uh, 1504 last trade on SoFi. GameStop back to 160, was over 161, backed off again, still down 235 on the day. All right. Ooh-wee, uh, what else is going on? Uh, ATIP down nine cents, AMC down 40, Matterport now up a dime. The levers are working for me. Uh, we're down 15 on 23 and me. We're up down a penny on FWA, a fifth wall. Down two pennies on Vector. We're up a penny on NavSite. We're down two pennies on Sextero. There's nothing going on there. Um, IBM down 19 cents, breaking all our hearts. Dow is up 90, uh, not 81 points. Microsoft up 82 cents. Apple up 11. Tesla up 579. Bed Bath & Beyond down 50 cents a share to 28.48. BlackBerry down 14. Royal Caribbean down a buck twenty-one. Norwegian down sixty-seven. Carnival down thirty-six. Amazon down thirteen dollars. Facebook up eighty-five cents. Google down forty cents to two thousand seven hundred sixty-seven dollars and forty-nine cents. How about that? J.P. Morgan down sixty-three cents. Goldman Sachs down two fifty-eight. It's at four twelve forty-two, and it's going to seven hundred a share. Mark my words. Get long-term calls. Jump on this and make money. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Uh, back to our favorites here. Oh man, fifteen oh four on SoFi now. Volume on the day sixteen point five million is what I'm showing now at the moment. Uh, GameStop down two fifty one to one fifty nine eighty four. Unfortunately, broken the one sixty level at the moment. Those of you who have options expiring today, you've got 165s, 170s, 175s, 180s. You're cheering this on, uh, letting the stock uh, sit down here and watching contracts expire. Anyway, there you have it. Uh, let's see. Uh, I put in my order for 12 and a half SoFi contracts uh, for October 15th for three bucks. Come on, shorts. Hit it a little harder and fill my order, Dagnabbit. Are you the high bidder right now? Are you the high bidder or did you join the existing market? Um, if you've joined the existing market, uh, you might or may not get them. You might want to bid 301 or 305. I don't know if you can bid in pennies anymore, but you might, might go 305, get in line first, play that game. We'll see what happens. Uh, what else is going on? Covered calls on SoFi are green. Buy the dip. There you go. Um, where are we at now? 1504 on the stock um, at the moment. Volume now on SoFi, 16.7 million shares from what I can tell you. Robin Hood losing gas, 48.96. My levers aren't working so well anymore. Only up 87 cents on Robin Hood. The Dow is, that, is now only up 57 points, dropping again. Uh, GameStop at 160, 235 drop on the day at this point in time. Physical therapy, ATIP at 416 a share right now. All right. Uh, hey, third beer, Austin says, one more and I'm passed out on the couch dreaming of SoFi Green and my wife loves me. 
Is it Friday? Uh, is it really Friday already? I didn't know. I didn't notice. Uh, no idea. How are we doing with the uh, thumbs ups department? 444 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody, for helping out this guy. Throwing some thumbs ups my way. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, we might make 500 in no time. That's fabulous. Appreciate that. Cheers to all of you from around the world who are watching me today. Thank you for all the thumbs ups you're throwing us. Thanks for becoming members of this channel. Thank you for becoming subscribers. Thank you for your donations. Everything. You guys are great. Love having you here. 456 thumbs ups now. That's where we're at right now. Um, so five, 1504, 200, $2.43 on the bit. 1504 right now. Man, oh man. Such fun times on the big markets today. Never a dull moment. All right, let's see. Check some of my other messages here. Um, thank you. Um, Justin Pope. Yes, sir. Looking forward to seeing you. Um, what else is going on here? Uh, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, thank you all for uh, for reaching out to me. I appreciate this. This is good stuff. Love it. Uh, and uh, let's go through there. I'm just checking all my stats make sure everything's going through. Yep, it's all happening here. Thank you, everybody, for subscribing and becoming part of this show and this channel. I love you. Fabulous. 467 thumbs up. Got to love that. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> Beautiful. Um, the going postal. Laugh out loud and your wife loves you. <laughs> oh, oil those levers, Bruce. Oil those levers. Uh, <laughs> going postal says... If you follow Reddit, your wife loves her boyfriend. Just so you know, uh, Reddit knows what's going on. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. We are 1503, 1504 on SoFi right now. Volume on the day, 17.2 million in uh, 27 million minutes. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. Um, Robin Hood, 49.47, up $1.37. GameStop, 159.94, down 2.41. ATIP 418 down nine cents, reluctantly giving it up nine cents. A A AMC is almost even, down only 13 cents. AMC is trying to break even here. It's close. Uh, 7.2 million volume, though, very quiet. SoFi is out trading AMC now in volume. Interesting how that is working. Um, very interesting. 1569 on Matterport, up 35 cents, just took a shot higher. 314,000 volume. Very interesting. 1569 on Matterport up 35 cents. Maybe we should halt this and call a congressional investigation, see what's going on. Retail investors are making money on Matterport. We can't have that. Oh no, what is that all about? 15.01 now on SoFi, $15 on SoFi right now. But Matterport, 15.69 up 35 cents on the Matterport. Something's wrong. All stocks should be red. Retailers should be losing money. What can I say? All right, cheers. 15 bucks, 14.98 on SoFi. Here we go. Another attack on SoFi is underway. Uh, 17.9 million traded on SoFi. 14.97. The low of the day, 14.93. We're at 14.97 right now. Stock is coming in again on another wave of selling. Um, our troll is gone. I don't know what happened to our troll. Maybe he ran out of gas. I'm not exactly sure. 14.96 last trade on SoFi. 1496.97 right now on the SoFi. 1551 on Matterport, up 17 cents. Uh, GameStop, 160.21, down 214. The Dow up 52. SP up four. NASDAQ up uh, half a point, now down a half a point. 1498 on SoFi. 1498 on SoFi. Volume now, 17.95 million from what I can tell you at this instant in time. Uh, forgot to pay the troll, troll, Bruce. Uh, troll toll. There you go. There it is. Um, $14.99 now on SoFi. Uh, and $15.60 on Matterport. Up $0.26 cents on Matterport. $15.60. All right. The Dow now only up 38. It's given up about 55 points in the last five minutes. A little sell off. $14.97 now on SoFi. S&P down four, Nasdaq down five, oil down twelve cents. Sorry, 
All indexes are up. Dow is up 22, S&P up 3, NASDAQ up 3, but oil down 9. Okay. Just too darn exciting around here. 1495 on SoFi here. Another little attack coming on right now. Anyway, there it is. Uh, Bruce, I, I just pulled out on the road and said, let's do that. I bought a thousand call options for Goldman Sachs with a $420 strike price. Date is June 2022. Oh, good luck there, Marcus. Uh, hope you make a ton of money. Uh, think of me. Uh, Uncle Bruce, you're always welcome to drop by Springfield, Illinois. We'd be glad to put you up for a bit during your nomad travels. Springfield, Illinois, land of Lincoln. Well, thank you for the invite. Gotta love that. Um, what can I say? Um, 496, Phil with SoFi. Kevin, way to go, buddy. Way to grab it. Uh, 1498 right now. Um, let's see what's happening. Uh, making some money, scooping up some cheap paper from the loose hands of SoFi. $14.99 right at the moment. Volume now is $18.6 million from what I can see here. Keep an eye on that, of course. Uh, GameStop is holding at $160 right now. Anyway, there you go. Uh, here we go. We got the attacker back here. Here we go. We're back. He's back. She's back. It's back. Whatever it is is back. The robot is back. All right. Um, anyway, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, what else is happening here? Um, and let's go. Let's go. Uh, NTPC, I'm so glad I bought these those cheap Matterport calls after earnings. Just cashed in on one for 310. Still got two left. 1557 on Matterport, up 23 cents. Uh, so far, 1497, down 249. The low of the day, 1493. As the blowout continues, the sellouts are getting done. 18.77 million on SoFi volume. Um, let's see. Uh, CNBC not CNN. All right, SoFi got some at 1497. Moose's Valley, nice job. <clears throat> Scooping it up. Stealing candy from babies. Picking up this cheap SoFi stock. Way to go. 1497 right now. Down 249. 1496. Okay. All right. Okay, keeping an eye on my comments. Uh, <laughs> I'm waiting for that troll to keep coming around here. 1495 on SoFi. 1496, the low of the day, 1493. We're just a few pennies above it at this moment in time. How much will come in? How hard? Uh, how fast is the question? People are scooping up some cheap stuff here. Scooping up some stock as, as it's nibbling in here. 1496 right now. 1495, 1496 is where we're at at this moment in time. Uh, Matterport up 17 cents, 1551. There you go. Um, I already got some, but I can't pass up these deals. Um, let's see. Um, uh, what else are we talking about? 1499 again, 1497, 1499 on SoFi. Uh, 19 million traded now. Officially, 19 million in 34 minutes. 1498, 1499. All right. Jennifer is alive and well. Hello, Jen. Can we see the mountains outside? No. No, still can't see our mountains. Three miles away from the house, we can't see the mountains. We are socked in, socked in with the smoke here. Absolutely socked in. We were supposed to get to like 90 uh, something degrees yesterday. We only got into the mid 80s because the smoke blocked out the sun. The power of the sun couldn't reach the ground here. Yeah. We were five to eight degrees cooler and because of that. That's going to be the same today. Today again. It says yeah. a high of 33, but we're not going to. 33 that. Celsius, nowhere, nowhere. We're going to be 25, 26. And now we get wow. this little health monitor. Oh, yeah. So can, can you see that? There, See the red bar there? That's bad. That that's, shows you your air quality. That's bad. Yeah. $15 on SoFi. But if you're in Vernon, look. Get out. That's it. Look, get out. Get out from Vernon. Get out. <laughs> we got friends in Vernon. Get out. Cranbrook's worse than we are. Cranbrook is bad. Kelowna's bad. The interior. We're in the yeah, interior, but we're in the southern interior. It's bad, but not as bad no. as elsewhere, but it's still terrible. And uh, it's, it's kind of like living on the coast a bit in the... The Kootenai is a very long lake, yes. and so we get lake effect. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So we get, it says we get storms, but storms are actually up on the lake. Yeah, we don't actually. They're not really on. We get to hear them and see them. Yeah, but we don't but We don't get that here. We don't get the lightning here. Yeah. Yeah. We take that away too. 
coffee. Well, I had to finish it because I was oh, late getting up today. That's right. That's right. I woke up and someone was still in bed. <laughs> didn't get up and when I was supposed to get up. I didn't get up. That's I'm exhausted right. from all the stress, all the troll attacks. Oh, no. Oh, today is Friday the 13th. Are the witches getting you? Oh, we got a, we got a troll here jumping all over us today. Oh, uh, he oh. joined the channel and immediately started posting hate messages. There you go. Yeah, so we're blocking him and doing the best we can to stop him. But Yeah. I, I, I just don't understand. <laughs> uh, none of us do. Uh, we are all, we're all I was raised by. with the, if you can't say anything nice, you don't say anything at all. You just use hand gestures. Not this kid. Uh, not this kid. Uh, new, uh, new. We are looking here at new, uh, new people who've joined today. Uh, let me tell you, let me give you the names of the channels that have joined today. Uh, uh, Bruce made thousands. What does that say? Bruce made thousands in the market. Uh, what was this? Uh, Bruce made thousands. There's one, two, three, four, five of those, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times someone joined the channel with a new name. Bruce made thousands okay. swindling the market. Bruce crashed the market. One, uh, two. Bruce <laughs> crashed the market? Yeah, yeah. I crashed oh, in 1929. Honey, uh, you're good. At least two of those. Bruce is filming from, I don't know what that one is. Uh, and Bruce funded the something. Bruce has conned people. Uh, there's at least 25 channels that have been created today, uh, today uh, by this guy, to now post hate messages. Here's another one. Bruce funded the construction of Auschwitz. There you go. Oh. That's what I did. Um, uh, and I'm a notorious swindler. It says. That's oh those my. are the messages. Those are the messages. But speaking of that, did you read the article that some someone over in Germany, I, I didn't pay attention where, um, their house flooded or their their father's house flooded, so they were in there helping him, and they pulled off the wet board, and there was a secret stash back there from when the Stasi had lived in this house. The secret police. The, during the war, and they had they had stashed stuff away when the Russians and the Americans were coming. And so they found this trove of, of artifacts. I'm sure it belongs to the state. I know. <clears throat> they can't keep it themselves. It goes no. to the state. No, oh my gosh. Yeah, kind of. Intrigue. In intrigue. Intrigue. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I live in Cresta, not in Germany. So, you know, none of that stuff here. Although trolls will say, uh, yeah, he's in on it. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're part of that. That German line. Yeah, the, the, this guy. That, they obviously didn't hear you talking about all the food at Sherman's yesterday. And no, they, no, they weren't listening to me talk about how great Sherman's Deli was. That's right. I love That's Sherman's right. Deli. Oh, we man. We can't get rid of anybody. Oh, we love their food. Yeah, I can't get a break. 1501 on SoFi. Do you know what the bagel's going to be today? Uh, My water's just about oh, done. We got the, uh, we got the option. We got the uh, gold cuts. See? Oh, that's why they said Auschwitz, because you say Auschnitt. Auschnitt. <laughs> Cold cuts. Open, open cuts. <laughs> I think that's what we'll do to this morning. Okay. We'll have the all meat, all the all meat bag. It's been a while from meat since lovers. the meat lovers. There it is, right. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Yeah, at least twenty-five channels have been created today by this guy. At least twenty-five channels today, uh, from what I can tell you. Yeah. What can I say? Um, fourteen ninety nine to fifteen dollars on SoFi right now. Uh, volume on SoFi twenty million three hundred thousand in uh, thirty nine minutes. There you go, six hundred thousand an hour a minute. Six hundred thousand trades uh, shares trading a minute. Pretty active. Um, we've had uh, AMC trade uh, total volume of nine point four million over twenty million trade on SoFi. So SoFi is. By far the heavy trader, only 4.4 million Robinhood traded. SoFi is leaving everybody in the dust with regards to how many are being traded today. It's probably the most active stock on the markets today. The Dow's up 10 points as we're slumping back here at this moment. Uh, Apple up 19 cents, Microsoft up $1.30. IBM breaking everybody's hearts down 12 cents. Uh, with all the levers I have, I can't control IBM. I do all I can, but you know. Uh, Bruce, you're making me laugh with Ocean. At um, uh, that's 25 subs for Uncle Bruce. 25 channels is good cheddar for your bagel. Uh, yeah, well, you know, um, what can I say? Uh, uh, I know where Hoffa's buried. Don't mess with me. That's right. I know where you put this guy. 
Oh man, uh, fifteen dollars on SoFi down two forty six. Now at fourteen ninety nine. Uh, the Dow up eleven, S and P up uh, one, and Nasdaq up a half a point. Oil down twenty seven cents a barrel. Oil I think is about to crap out. I think oil is this close to breaking fifty into the fifties. Uh, we're sixty eight right now. I think there's a ten dollar drop coming in oil in the near future because the demand is not there. It was uh, it is catching everyone off guard. Uh, what's going on here? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, what else can I say? Um, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All kinds of crazy comments today. Thank you, everybody. Uh, yep, yeah, oil. Uh, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, that's what I said, right? I said oil would be sixty dollars tomorrow, didn't I? Saturday. Yeah, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> I got people who don't pay attention. I I I I've got sensationalists who are jumping on me. Fifteen oh one on SoFi. Um, what can I say? <laughs> That's your whole plan. Get her. That was that was your whole plan. Get get her. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh. <laughs> oh man. What can I say? I must have something in my ear. <laughs> Uh, there, there are videos for that. There are YouTube videos for that. You got something in your ear? You can check out some really gross videos on YouTube about that. Oh, man, they got a lot more views than I get. I'll tell you that. Oh, my gosh. I think I should start a channel just showing how I take wax out of my ears. I bet you I get millions of views just for that. Uh, and then I'll have guests come on. I'll take wax out of their ears, although I'm not, I'm not qualified to do that. Maybe I have to hire a guy to do that or a girl. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, Bruce, what should I do? Uh, Fanville saying, what, what should I do? Should I buy 10 contracts of SoFi, $15 calls, January 2022, or should I buy 200 shares at $15 a share? Uh, how, do I, how do I play? Now, if you buy 10 contracts, you're leveraging 1,000 shares. If you buy 200 shares, you're leveraging 200 shares. So there's that. Um, if you uh, are buying them at 15, it's at the money. Um, here we go. Bruce will run Robinhood to $400 tomorrow. That's the new channel name right there. There's another new channel. How about that? Uh, man, oh, man, another $10 donation. How about that? Amazing. Uh, absolutely amazing how this is working. Oh, cray, ah, blay. Uh, wow, I'm I'm really famous. I'm really famous. <clears throat> so if you buy if you buy the ten contracts, you're leveraging a thousand shares. If they go to uh, twenty bucks a pop, they're five dollars in the money. Uh, they're worth five grand. If the stock if the stock goes to twenty dollars a share, your two hundred are higher by a thousand dollars. So you're either five grand richer or a thousand dollars richer. For the same move, if the shares go to twenty-five dollars a share, <clears throat> they reach twenty-five dollars a share. You, you're going to have ten-dollar contracts, book value plus premium, of course. Uh, that's a lot of money. That's ten grand gain. Uh, whereas if the shares go to twenty-five, the two hundred will be worth two thousand more. So, what leverage do you like? I like the t I like the January timing. Uh, I'm not afraid of the price, fifteen dollars. So maybe the options might be the way to go. Might be the way to the way to go. Uh, I bought a hundred so far at fourteen ninety nine. Nothing wrong with that either. There's nothing wrong with that stuff. Um, very good. Uh, laughing a lot at the troll. Um, and uh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh gosh, love these comments. Um, fifteen oh two on so fine. It's uh, picking up a little bit right now. 15 to 1502 uh, volume now 21.3 million it looks like 21.3 GameStop 157.72 down 463 um, ATIP 419 420 now down six cents Matterport 1540 up six cents holding a gain uh, fifth wall unchanged nav side up a penny IBM down 30 cents breaking all our hearts there you go uh, all right. Oh, here we go. Bruce has the power to crush entire markets. Yay! Bruce has the power to crush entire markets. Yay! Bruce has the power. Okay. Uh, well, block that one. Was that 28 now? 
it's kind of like every month. Uh, it kind of comes around and sets up like 50, 60 channels and starts all over again. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a robot or it's or it's a friend of a robot or, or something or somebody robotic. Uh, I don't know. It's weird. It is just the weirdest thing. <clears throat> Probably, like Jen says, mommy's credit card. Against me, says Bruce, is a notorious bagel enthusiast. That's true. Uh, that I cannot, I cannot deny that Bruce is a notorious bagel enthusiast. I, I, I admit that that is, you're right on that count. Uh, absolutely correct on that, on that count. Um, uh, thank you against me, Fenville FX45. Thank you, Colin Peach. Uh, uh, can you make an ETF of your stock picks, uh, Michael? Thank you. My, my take on the bad EPS is the warrant reclassification is liability. Swindon, okay. Thank you for that donation this morning. Uh, the SEK uh, Kroners, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, all of you, for this. Uh, appreciate it very much. Here you go, all right. Bagel. Oh, here we go with the bagel, baby. See, nicely toasted. Oh, yeah. Lots of that lion or sausage. Man, that smells good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we have lion or sausage, and we have. Um, lion or meatloaf. Yeah, a Bavarian meatloaf, and we have. Um, we have the uh, ham, the uh, real thin sliced. Yeah, that really nice. Uh, I can't remember what it comes up. Roasted ham in oh, store. Oh. Really nice. Oh yeah, <laughs> yummy. Uh, Fifteen dollars a share on the SoFi right now uh, is the uh, last trade. Um, we have twenty-one point eight million traded today. A one fifty-eight on GameStop. Uh, Jen, great as always. Exactly. Uh, you know it, kids. Uh, bagel, 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 says Eddie. There you have it. Well, let's try one of these. Um, let's get the first half going right here. The old meat bagel. Look at that. Oh, with the cheese on there. Ooh, this is so good. Mmm. Oh. Bruce's room is a green screen at CNBC. There you go. Yeah, Jen wants to know where's hers. Wow. Yeah, Bruce is a green screen. At CNBC, biting commentary, vicious, vicious commentary. <laughs> We're at fifteen oh two on SoFi. I'm going to keep eating this bagel. Fifteen oh two. Hmm. Lovely. Lovely. Matterport hanging on to a game, 1538 up for Cheers to all of you around the world. Joining Bruce today and Jennifer, live from Creston. You know it, Emily. You know it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Crazy times. Crazy days. Right on. Um, Kevin, we got it. Um, we got it, Kevin. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you, Kevin. We got you. We'll get that out to you. Beautiful job. All right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for the 515 thumbs ups. I appreciate that. Here we go. The props behind Bruce aren't real. <laughs> I think I know who this is. I think I know who's doing this. Uh, I'm not going to say anything on the air, but I, I have a suspicion I might know who this is is actually doing this. Um, just, just think it. Just, uh, just, yeah, just think it. Uh, I think I know who this is. Um, uh, we'll see. We'll see what's going on. Uh, cheers, everybody. Hmm. Mm, 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 mm. Let's take a look at this prop right here. Yeah, it's fake, all right. 
It's fake as kids. Fake can be. <laughs> yeah, this set behind me is all fake. <laughs> oh, man. This is Yoko's payback. It's Yoko doing it. It's Yoko. We're at 15.01 on SoFi. It's Yoko. That's right, Bruce. You show us who you really are. <laughs> Uncle Bruce, is Jen wearing a green screen suit so we can't see her? Is that what she's doing? See, if I was wearing, if this is a green screen, you wouldn't see me. Because this is being green, you'd only see the wording. Think about that. Those darn kids. Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> Oh, man. With Uncle Bruce's financial for Cheese Whiz, Eagles, Diet Coke, with when does ha the Health and Fitness Channel start? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that mug touching was faked uh, using some sick, twisted Matterport technology. It, it all makes sense now. It's all coming together. I love this place. Great audience. And for the use, you're the man, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> if you look closely, if you look carefully at the picture in the back, you can clearly make out a, a picture of Bruce as a young boy in Bulgaria. It's obvious. He's a, he is pulling these levers. That's what he's doing. A 1502 on SoFi. Oh, man. <laughs> My identity is, uh, has been uh, revealed. Hmm. Can't get away with anything. No. That's right. Bruce is really max headroom. Here you go. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. We're up 33 on the Dow. Go. Go. So good. Mm. Wonderful. Never a dull moment here. 1501 on SoFi. GameStop, 158.75. That's up 75 cents since I started in this bagel. Stocks are going higher. We're only down a nickel on ATIP. Matterport, unfortunately, down 14. On, John. The Nifty 50. Oh boy. So good. Mm. Forty-eight ninety-four on Robinhood, only up eighty-five cents. My levers are failing me. Fifteen oh one on SoFi right now. Volume on SoFi at this moment is uh, twenty-three point five million. That's what we have on SoFi. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, All righty. We're up eleven point nine on the Dow. Up four point nine on S and P. Up thirty on the Nasdaq.
Oh yeah. Bagel part two. Mm. Hi Zach, how you doing? Nice bagel, Jen says anti PC. <laughs> Max Headroom, Brewer, Farmer, pretty close, don't you think? <laughs> Welcome everybody to the show. Fourteen ninety eight. Here we go. Bruce bought every bank and runs the Western world. Okay. I bought every bank and I run the Western world. How about that? All right. There you go. 15 on SoFi again. Mm. This bagel's disappearing awful fast. Matterport under attack, fifteen fourteen, down twenty. Fifteen eleven, Matterport. This is so good. Fifteen dollars on SoFi, fifteen fourteen on Matterport. SoFi fifteen eleven. Z fifteen twelve. Fifteen sixteen on so far. It's going higher. Fifteen thirteen on Matterport. Fifteen fourteen on so far. Going up. Fifteen sixteen. Fifteen eighteen on so far. We're going higher. Going higher. Fifteen twenty two. <laughs> Going higher. <laughs> Fifteen twenty-four on SoFi. Anybody there? We're going higher on SoFi. <clears throat> Jen is secretly Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> 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 I 
I was filled at 1497. We're now 1520 on SoFi. 1521. We're going higher. Davey, thank you for this donation. Runs the Western world. Thank you, buddy. Oh, man. It's like watching paint dry, says Sitting Bolt. <laughs> 1523. We're higher. We're moving higher. <coughs> you hoo SoFi, we're going up. We're going up. 1527 on SoFi. We're moving, kids. We're moving. I don't know if you noticed. A 1525 on SoFi. The 25.4 million volume. We're going higher on SoFi. We're going higher now. Right now on SoFi. <laughs> fifteen twenty two, the shortest route of gas. That's right. The stock's coming on now. Yep, that $15 wall of uh, support is starting to show itself a little bit here, I guess. Uh, we'll see just what kind of power we got and what is going to happen. Mm. The volume is crazy. 15.21 on SoFi. Thank you for the gift. You got it. Stealing candy from children. Down at 1490s, absolutely. 1519, 1520 on SoFi right now. SoFi on the move. Uh, 25.68 million now. SoFi jumped up here a little bit. Very interesting. This is why I got in the stocks, the excitement. Zzz, there you go. 1519 on SoFi. 20 cent jump in like two minutes. How about that? Mm -mm. Uh, 23 me at 759 down 34. Matterport down 18, 1516 a share. GameStop 158.49. Um, is the troll now the biggest donator? I think he's over $100. It's possible that he's donated over 100 today. Um, he's, may, he's, may, he's may have created uh, 30 channels today, so that's a $300 uh, you know payment. I get 70% of that, so that's $210 I'm supposedly getting. We'll see if that all comes through or not. Uh, interesting. Um, mm, what can I say? Uh, <laughs> Bruce condones stealing candy from children, says the troll. That's what he said. Encouraging He's encouraging. Matterport, 1524, down a dime now. Matterport jumping around like crazy. Oh, man. Can you remind me when NSH and BACQ will change their ticker symbols? I think NSH uh, becomes uh, um, uh, Spire today. Um, today's the 13th. Yeah, today's the day that <clears throat> the vote, shareholder vote's held. <clears throat> so probably Monday or Tuesday, NSH will become Spire. S-P-I-R, I think, is going to be the new symbol. And then BACQ ch gets uh, shifted over on the 20th of August. Next week, Friday, is the vote. So probably the next Monday, it'll become Rocket Lab, RKLB. There you go. It's coming. Bruce is very nice. So is Jen. There's a there's a controversial statement. Uh, that's what trolls love to pounce on. Uh, yeah, th these are the kind of comments that can get me into trouble. Um, <laughs> Uncle Bruce, let's meet at Chaos Headquarters and get software updates for our sh our shoe phones. <laughs> $210 profit for letting some troll entertain everybody. That's not a bad deal, Bill Cohn is saying. Uh, Justin, Bruce helps old ladies cross the street, that son of a bitch. <laughs> free, free thinker McJones. Bruce eats pizza with a fork. He's a bastard. <laughs> oh, man. That's true. I eat cake with a fork. Forks are good. Oh my gosh. 15.12 now. We're backing up a little bit. 15.12 on SoFi. Let's see if we get another breakout here. Matterport's still down 12 cents to 15.22. Uh, what is going on? Yeah, but they didn't want to cross the street, Bruce. They, why are you making them cross it? They didn't want to do that. Uh, it was for their own good. Uh, they had to cross the street. Uh, didn't like their under uh, underarm deodorant. It didn't smell right. Anyway, what can I say? I saw Uncle Bruce eat, eat M and M's with a spoon once. A uh, controversy. Um, you know, uh, Bruce. Honestly, you've straight ignored M E. Haven't mentioned it even once. Maybe don't even feel it's anything noteworthy, and they're just throwing 
and they're growing. But you know the earnings came out this AM. Bruce, how dare you not talk about 23andMe? You bugger. Bruce cleans his glasses with his T-shirt. Oh, no. <laughs> Bruce wears white pants after Labor Day. Oh, the indignity of it all. Bruce helps them back across the street if they don't want help. Uh, Bruce breathes oxygen. What? All the other good comments were taken. I live with it. <laughs> Bruce puts ketchup on his well-done steak. <laughs> uh, is Jen agent number 99? Uh, forks are good. Bruce, 2021, quote, unquote. Uh, I read that Bruce once gave a dog a treat. That's sickening. It's a sickening. <laughs> Oh no 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 no! Yep yep, it's not it's not easy. Um, yep, yeah, Bruce is a closet uh, Dallas Cowboy fan. Um, when the fat lady sings, Bruce is just getting started. Uh, Bruce eats Snickers with a knife and a fork. How could you? Fifteen, ten, fifteen, eleven. That says it all. Glad I sold. Uh, Bruce trolls other channels. That's what he does. He, he takes the money that trolls give him, then he goes and trolls other channels with that money. See, yes, we know it. Bruce is all about. Yeah, you can't fool us. He feeds straight cats. How dare you? Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. How dare you do such a thing, Bruce? How could you? <laughs> Matterport down a dime at 15.24. Come on, Matterport. Come on. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, 23 and me holding first quarter net loss narrows revenue rises issues full year fiscal 22 guidance uh, this I have seen a few times but I saw two Scandinavians putting ketchup on pasta bolognese bolognese oh madonna, madonna mia oh no um, Bruce do you put a, a cork on the tins of your fork for safety like Ruprecht <laughs> Ruprecht, uh, nice Willard. Uh, Bruce donated both his kidneys. Bruce donated both his kidneys. New channel. There you go. Bruce donated both his kidneys. How dare you, Bruce? Uh, oh, man. <laughs> Bruce drives slow in the fast lanes. Bruce eats multiple bananas at a time. Bruce calls crepes pancakes and sees nothing immoral with it. Nothing immoral whatsoever. Uh, I do agree. I would like to hear Bruce talk about the ME earnings. Um, Bruce was was the one who tanked uh, Cray America Industries. In the words of Kramer, he's not going to be around for a while. <laughs> this is the best trolling I've ever seen. As well done here. Uh, Bruce eats bagels and doesn't wait 20 minutes to go swimming. What a guy. Oh, no. Can't Scandinavian ketchup is closer to marinara sauce than to American ketchup. Not as weird as it looks. <laughs> Damn it, Jim says, Bruce once said, Texas. Oh, how dare you even bring that up. Bruce, did you ever make your doctor angry? Butch, Bruce puts pineapple on pizza. Oh, the shame, the shame. <laughs> oh, how can he live with himself? I mean, come on, man. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, it's so hard. It's so hard. It's just so difficult, you know. It's hard to be green. It's hard being green. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, yeah, well, the financial results for ME came out on July the 29th. I don't know what you guys are all upset about. Uh, they've been out for a while. Um, you know what? Bruce is so above us. He doesn't need a partner in a three-legged race. That's it right there. Um, Bruce, Larry, Bruce got Larry David disinvited from Obama's birthday party. Uh, Bruce wears tan suits. Uh, Bruce farts in elevators and scowls at the old lady sharing the elevator because it's their fault. They always it. Uh, I don't know if I can support you, uh, YouTuber that does all these things. Gasp. Oh my God. People that put pineapple on pizza should be put into the loony bin. Uh, Bruce once picked up a dog by its hind legs and pushed it around like a wheelbarrow. Oh my God. ATIP is on sale again, 420 right now, down seven cents. Bruce is a troll in Shill's clothing. Ah, uh, there you go. Bruce cuts little kids' kite strings at the park on windy days. That's what he does. That's the kind of guy he is. 1502 on the SoFi. Come on, SoFi. 1501 again. Um, uh, Bruce won't accept a pizza delivery if the crust is on the bottom. 
Um, uh, Bruce, Emmy's financials came out this morning, says DQ84. Uh, I wonder when Yoko Ono doesn't get enough likes on a video, does she put on Bruce's live stream? Uh, you know? Bruce stole bread from an old lady. I think it was rye bread. Uh, what is it? Uh, Sh Schindler's? No, Sh what's the name of that bakery? Uh, I can't remember the name of the bakery. Bruce has two YouTube channels. How dare you? Bruce eats uh, broccoli and saves and saves and, and, and saves his gas for crowded elevators. Bruce is secretly colorblind. He can't tell the difference between green and red. W. Walters, I got nothing. I got nothing. I like pineapple and iron anchovies on pizza. What of it? Uh, Joshua Ho is a new member. Welcome, Joshua. Uh, Bruce, for you, the chubby kid in Stand By Me. Um, uh, Bruce farts and blames uh, blames on his wife. Emmy financial report the date was announced on July 29th. Today's the financial. Oh, okay. Bruce puts his quarters in random packing meters. It's annoying. Bruce got Kayleen Jenner's pregnant. Too much? Too much? Uh, welcome, Joshua Ho. Welcome, Joshua. Marble Rye. That's right. What's the name of the bakery he got it at? Um, uh, I can't remember the name of the bakery. Uh, Bruce eats broccoli and saves his gas for crowded elevators. I just joined to make a joke. I just joined to make a joke. <laughs> I just want to be out of the fun, man. I, I just want to be part of this. Damn it, Jim. Uh, Bruce one time drank the pickle juice out of a jar, left the pickles and put the entire jar back in the fridge dry. Oh, man. Bruce is a bongo. Uh, Bruce brings cinnamon babka to events. Uh, Cam Lane, Bruce plays video games. Get him. That's your whole plan. Get him. Uh, laughing, laughing, laughing. Oh, my gosh. 1501 on SoFi. Bruce sits in front of computers and reads stock quotes all day long. That's all he does. He just, he just talks about what the markets are doing. That's all he does. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, shit, 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 schnick, schnitz, schnitzers, schnitzers bakery. That's right. Schnitzers bakery. When Bruce farts, Chuck Norris cries. That's right. <laughs> uh, Bruce only eats, eats egg yolks. Bruce wears a Gore-Tex parka and walks into a liquor store. Um, Bruce wrote to the B into the Bruce wrote to into the BBC about how the lumberjack bit on Monty Python was offensive to Canadians and it got cancelled. Bruce, pineapple on pizza. I hope we both mean fresh pineapple, not that from the canned stuff. I mean that in its nettle package. Bruce always makes sure both sides of the toilet paper are used before flushing. I'm quite certain Bruce was in Nam with Mr. Rogers. Uh, Bruce, uh, just pawn in game of life. He's just a pawn in the game of life. Uh, Bruce created a WSB on Reddit. He created Wall Street Bet. I went ahead and bought January 22, 15s on SoFi. I clearly didn't learn my lesson about being over leveraged. Um, Bruce uses his iPad to take pictures. Uh, Bruce threw the grenades that blew off Lieutenant Dan's legs. Uh, Bruce is fully vaccinated. Bruce puts ketchup on bagels? Oh, no. 1502 on SoFi, 1503. 160 on GameStop. We're back, baby. We're back. Oh, man. Deliciously devious. Edison kissed Bruce, so Schwimmer cut Bruce from the multi-million dollar running show, Freds. <laughs> oh, gosh, gosh, God. Matterport down 13 cents. So far, 1503. Bruce takes money from the Salvation Army buckets at Christmas time. He takes money from those guys. Oh, jeez. 1503 on SoFi. 160.28 on GameStop. We're down a nickel on ATIP. Uh, Matterport down a dime. Bruce introduced John Lennon to Yoko Ono. Bruce was Mr. Rogers' spotter. Mr. Rogers was a well-known sniper. He was called the Death Whisper of Da Nang. <laughs> Bruce laughed when Tom Hanks lost Wilson. He laughed. Bruce has man hands. Bruce introduced John and Yoko. Bruce eats bagels only once a day. Uh, Bruce buys scratch-off tickets and just scans them. No scratching. He just looks at them. He gets goes right to the thing and then scans them. He doesn't even play the game. Uh, Bruce canceled your favorite TV show. SoFi being attacked by shorts picking up is so uh, F.I. easy money. 1503. Uh, Bruce works as a mall Santa at Christmas and tells all the kids that sit on his lap Santa isn't real, and their parents are liars. That's what he does. That's what Bruce is all about. Bruce requires Jed to fold the end of the TP roll into a fan shape after each constitutional. Bruce has no legs. Bruce wears a tidy, oh, what is it, whitey tidies with boxers over them. 
Oh man, uh, Rogers was not. Uh, Bruce, uh, you 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 laughed at Wilson. I'm done. Goodbye. I'm out of here. Bruce installs the toilet paper with the loose side hanging underneath. Uh, Bruce can't figure out why the movie Platoon isn't under the comedy section. Oh man. Geo Ed O'Neill's character Al Bundy in Married with Children was based off of Uncle Bruce. Uh, Marcelo Bruce counted to infinity twice. Bruce lose lo, lose the smell of napalm. Uh, lose the smell of napalm and napalm in the morning. Remember, uh, a convicted, no, convinced Rose that there was no room for Jack on that door. Bruce is the reason why he is, is, is the reason no longer broker or no. Bruce, I'm still here with you. Just have a razz about some of these picks, man. Bruce uh, lock picks the toilet paper dispenser in public bathrooms and puts the rolls on the dirty pee floor. Bruce uses um, regular cheese on his poutine and not cheese curds. Justin Lane, oh my God, I can't get any work done with this. This is hilarious. Nick, um, Bruce always takes the last piece of pizza. Uh, damn it, Jim, sorry, loves. Uh, Snake, um, uh, Bruce claps his hands when the plane lands. <laughs> Bruce steals the middle of bagels. <laughs> Bruce hands out broccoli for Halloween. Um, Cam, that's, that's a sin. Bruce tells kids that the tooth fairy is fake and their teeth just go in. <laughs> I love that one. He just tells kids that the tooth fairy is fake and their teeth just goes in the trash. <laughs> oh, that is so good. I love that one. The teeth just go into the trash. <laughs> oh, I'm crying. That is so funny. I love that one. That is a good one. <laughs> oh, how many parents in the middle of the night have looked at each other and go, what do we do with it? What, what, are, we, what are we supposed to do with this thing? <laughs> The kid is pulling him out on purpose. This is bankrupting the house. What are we going to do with these teeth? Oh, my goodness. Oh, I love that one. That's a beauty. Oh, Uncle Bruce makes onions cry. Uncle Bruce was bit by a snake once. The snake died. <laughs> Bruce tears off the tags on mattresses before they're sold to us little people. <coughs> so by 1507. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Tess Donkey. I like this. Uh, Uncle Bruce was, was once organized the largest appropriation of Indian artifacts from his own hometown, depriving those folks of their toilet paper. Oh, my goodness. Ah, oh, Bruce smacks unruly children in department stores and blames it on the kids tripping on the floor. Bruce took an upper decker in the upstairs master bath. <laughs> Bruce claps at the end of a movie. Uh, damn, Uncle Bruce making trash tea. Oh, really? Was that funny? I mean, really? Uh, was that really funny? Uh, this is a fun show today, says Zach. Wow. Oh, hmm. laugh a lot trying to work here, people. I'm trying to work. Uh, yes, this is very funny. Um, laughter is contagious. I love this channel. It, it's, the, it's the roast show. Even when we're down, we're up. Oh, my God. <clears throat> multi dog. I smoked. I smoked at 4.20 p.m. some minutes ago. This It's funny. Uh, you you save them. Uh, thumbs. How can you not give a thumbs up for this? Um, <laughs> good article. Yahoo Finance doesn't help my loss on calls. Once hot DNA testing, Unicorn 23andMe is in serious trouble. There you go. Roast Uncle B. 23andMe down 28 cents at uh, at 766. It's a bargain as far as I'm concerned, but... Then, of course, I'm a long-term believer. 1506 on SoFi, 1507. Uh, it's getting hard to follow this channel. I signed up to get insight on stock trading, not to listen to a bunch of childish commentary. Uh, Nick, my entire portfolio is red, but Bruce has a laughing fit and makes everything okay. <laughs> the last time I saw Uncle Bruce laugh a lot this much, someone said, clean the crud out of your mouth. So that's right, uh, my friend Larry. A.B., uh, my sister thought the dentist was the tooth fairy and asked him if he was, not realizing that tooth fairy, it was a slur. <laughs> oh, no. Thomas, wow, says what I've been saying all morning and yet got ridiculed for. Amazing. Your roasting Bruce is uh, like a marshmallow. What a good sport. Morning, all. Bruce trades toilet paper for a donut. 
John, man, if you just showed up, you gotta watch the replay. Uh, Uncle Bruce does uh, does not uh, need trolls. His fans troll him. Bruce pulls his pants up all the way. Uh, pulls his pants all the way down to his ankles at the urinal. <laughs> Upper deckers, live on lovers. That's when you poop in the tank. Oh no! Bruce told us to buy Sophia Twenty when it was a bargain. Now there's a troll. Bruce is the guy that says, hold my drink, but he never seems to come back. Uh, Zach, how far back? Uncle Bruce switched anti-gin special brownies and beer with regular brownies and uh, no beer. Um, Multi-dog, just another patriot. Yeah, but we should do a dance because it's at 15 now. Uh, Uncle Bruce walks the grocery stores with a marker solving all cereal box mazes. Uh, Uncle Bruce does not like this childish commentary. The information about throwing teeth in your trash can is more valuable than any stock pick. Stock picks? Are you working with Getty? Are you working for Getty, Getty Images? Uncle Bruce, tell us about your most memorable day working in your father's music store, or what was your funniest customer experience you ever can recall? Oh my gosh, I'll have to think about that. Uncle Bruce is so good, you're laughing. Good stuff. Agiote is just cleaning the crud out of their mouth. <laughs> Get me a job if you are at Getty Images. Uh, come on now. I can feel myself getting uh, dumber. Bruce tells the person in the next stall that he doesn't have a spare to square. I'm sorry. I don't have a spare to square. 15, 12 on SoFi. Uh, we're down. We're still down a lot. Uh, Matterport down 8 cents at 15, 26. Uh, 23 me 767 down 26 cents. SoFi is a bargain all the way up to $400. You can make money on it all the way up there too. Bruce's chat loves to beat dead horses. Uncle Bruce, I'll bet you have some great baseball cards from 1929. Okay, rewind. It's not like the stock is going higher. Uh, Zach, uh, John Van, this has been going on for at least 20 minutes. I missed the first half. It's going to be a full replay watch today. This is gold, Jerry. Gold. It's gold, Jerry. Uh, is, it, is this a brownie? Uh, is the brownie story true? You get so serious from so, for some seconds. Uh, Bruce can drown a fish. Uh, I actually am working for Getty Images. I am Mr. Getty, the, the Getty man. Uh, there you go. I'm watching him eat. Uh, <laughs> 15, 13, 15, 14 on SoFi. Another little run coming on. 15, 15 on SoFi. 15, 25 on Matterport. Down 9. 7.68 on ME. Uh, down 25 cents. That's what we got right here, right now. The Dow's up 23. S&P up 3. NASDAQ up 6. SoFi, 15, 15. Come on! Oh, doing my Seinfeld, please! Oh gosh, one sixty thirty-five down two bucks on GameStop. ATIP down a nickel at four twenty-two. Matterport down nine cents. Oh my gosh, seven seventy on twenty-three and me. It's coming back! It's coming back! Oh man, Bruce, can I get some feedback on twenty-three and me calls expiring in December? Long term on the stock, I get. But these are my first time big call spends, and they expire. And they expire unlike the stock, you know. Uh, that's true, but uh, they do have until December. And all you need is a one, two dollar move uh, every day for a couple of days, and you're laughing. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> it is seven seventy, and it is frustrating to suffer this. But you got to just stick it out. You've got to just stick it out. Don't be flinching. Don't be twitching. Just sit there. Just sit there. Just wait. 1512 on SoFi. <coughs> 1513 on SoFi. Come on, SoFi. Why oh, on SoFi? 29 million, they say. Um, I'm showing, yeah, 29.1 million SoFi volume. Impressive volume. Um, a, a story came out that uh, Richard Branson took out 300 million out of SPCE. Might he start focusing on ME, his other investments? One can hope anyway. Um, understand that Mr. Branson is involved in dozens and dozens and dozens of ventures simultaneously. And that, uh, you know, the, the time will come for 23andMe. The time will come. And uh, it will not wait for you. If you try to time this 23andMe, uh, you could be sorely mistaken. Selling now would be a huge mistake uh, because you could be selling it at the all-time low. Uh, I would not be tinkering with this at all. Anyway, there you go. Um, anyway, I got a cheap 23andMe call. I'm already, it's already paying off. Beautiful job. This is the time to buy 23andMe calls. Fives, 750s, pick them off. Absolutely. SoFi, 1513. <clears throat> right now on SoFi, Matterport down 15 cents to 1519. What is going to happen with this day? It going a day here today. Um, Uncle Bruce and Jen planned a surprise going away party as they were going out of the country to the islands and arranged a surprise shotgun wedding for the guests. 
that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what we did. Uncle Bruce panic sells in the red. Uh, today, thanks. Today's what I needed to hear. Okay, okay, Bruce takes Bart Simpson quotes as life advice. Uh, smooth weight. Hey, Bruce, thanks for the laugh break. Some people in here get a little too wound up. I have January $10 strikes. Yes, uh, nothing wrong with that either. Nothing wrong with it at all. Oh, my. Uh, I'm laughing so much I have to blow my nose like crazy. Uh, you're loosening up all the, you know what? <laughs> Blowing away all the smoke that's in here from all the gosh awful air we have here. <laughs> the forest fires, we don't even see mountains that are three miles from our house. Can't see them. Not even the bottom of them. Yeah, we can see a, a, about a block or two. That's all we can see. Just socked in. It's like a London fog here. Ah, uh, what can I say? Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of sadness coming January. <laughs> Mr. Happy says, all right, um, he's cleaning the crud out of his snout. I'm doing what I can. Uh, stocks don't go up magically because you want them to or they have a good long-term outlook. Financials are a huge driver in the market. A catalyst is now needed to drive 23andMe. Uh, well, it's 772 right now. It's going up. Uh, it's going up a little bit, not a lot. 774. It's, it's going up. 23andMe is going up right now. A uh, huge portion of my portfolio is Matterport and SoFi. These attacks do not scare me. Matterport down 11 at 15.24. SoFi 15.16, getting a little better there. <clears throat> I was a bit nervous today because of Car Cardano Ada. Bruce, why don't you take a look at it? And Charles, whatever it is, uh, it's, for example, Hong Kong Company, if I don't miss something. Uh, because I, swear, I don't have time to look at other deals right now. I am up to in what I'm covering now and uh, I'm watching what I watch and um, I just don't have time to look at other stuff at the moment. It's nothing personal. I'm just really, really busy following what I'm following here uh, because I'm a fan of these stocks that I'm covering and uh, I believe in the long-term viability of these companies. 1514 on SoFi, 774 on 23 and Me, 1524 on Matterport, uh, all coming up here uh, at the moment just a little bit Bit, bit, and a little bit. Uh, down only four cents now on ATIP. We're about to go green over there. Um, come on, Matterport. You're only a dime away from going green. Let's go. 23 me 774. Let's go. Let's go. All right. <clears throat> the smart contracts are going to be huge. Uh, there you go, Carter. 15.15 on and SoFi now. 15.15 uh, a share. Um, whatever. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at, man? Ah. <sighs> ATIP coming on. It's down uh, 3.9 cents. <laughs> Goldman Sachs, great buy. Yes, it is. Goldman Sachs is a very good buy. Pick up contracts long term, and you will do very, very well. Try to get at the money if you can. Uh, even if you can buy them in the money, go ahead. Pick them up for next year. Do that. Um, Matterport's still down a dime. And 23andMe now, 776, only down 17 cents. 23andMe low of 7.56 about 15 minutes ago, now at 7.76. A 20 cent recovery, still down 17 cents on the day. Volume 974,000, that's it. Very quiet day on 23andMe. Uh, that's what we see here. It's what I've got. Um, looking at 23andMe for any kind of an announcement, any kind of a news release, any kind of anything. And... Uh, uh, <laughs> Let's see, anything on the Dow over there? No, just that one over there. And over here, um, over here, finally, 23andMe holding company, Edgar Online. Uh, we finally have some uh, presses, some kind of releases, something, anything. Um, uh, published August the 13th at 10.55 a.m. Eastern Time. <clears throat> just a few minutes ago, <clears throat> uh, We've got some information coming out on uh, 23andMe. Um, and uh, they've got uh, earnings coming out. Um, very dry reading here. I'm not going to bore you with this on the air. Uh, just not worth it. Um, we just we just do have some uh, news finally out on 23andMe. Um, and let's see. Consumer genetics company 23andMe lost widens in first earnings report since going public. Uh, this is from uh, Market Watch. Uh, we're at 1515 on SoFi now. 23andMe 777 down only 16 cents. 778 on SoFi uh, on 23andMe actually. 23andMe coming up now only down 15 cents. 
Consumer Genetics Company, 23Me, posted its first quarterly earnings as a public company on Friday after it merged with Richard Branson's <coughs> Special Purpose Acquisition Corporation, or SPAC, S-V-G-A-C Corp. In June, the company said it had a net loss of $42 million for the fiscal first quarter to June, uh, to June, wider than the loss of $36 million posted in the year earlier. Revenue came to $59 million, up 23% from $48 million. There are too few fact-set estimates to form a reliable consensus, but the company said it expanded its customer database to 11.6 million uh, genotyped customers. <clears throat> the company launched a net medication insight report to help customers understand how a genetic variant may alter their body's response to certain commonly prescribed medications, including uh, citol citoloprime and antidepressant and something else, a blood thinner, I can't pronounce these. It also launched a wellness report on cat and dog allergies um, uh, and other reports on other allergies, uh, hemorrhoids, cataracts, depression, and loss of sleep and smell during the pandemic. Operating costs rose to $72 million from $59 million a year ago, mostly due to R&D costs stemming from a partnership with GlaxoSmithKline, which is conducting a phase one trial of an immuno oncology program. 23andMe is now expecting fiscal 2022 revenue of 250 million to 260 million and a net loss of 210 million to 225 million shares were up two percent in the pre-market those are the comments uh, that i have out at the moment the stock now is doing a uh, 779 to 780 a share so it is down uh, at only about 14 uh, 14 cents a share at the moment 23 and me volume now is a 994,000 shares 779 last trade so far is up to 1518 looking a little better 23 me just jumped to 781 up two more cents from the last quote so that's pushing up a little bit more 1516 on SoFi uh Matterport at 1523 ATIP is down only two cents now to 425 ATIP looks like it's going to come back it might go higher um what else uh let's see what else what else what else uh 23 and me 777 at this moment 1528 down six cents on matterport it's coming up down two cents on atip it's going higher 1516 on sofi it's going higher um uh, fifth wall acquisition is higher up six cents Vector down six, Navsite up three cents, Sextera down 19, IBM up 12 at 143.20, breaking everyone's heart. We're up 21 points on the Dow now, up four on S&P, up 15 on NASDAQ. All righty, uh, what's going on? That's the dealio. We'll see what happens here. Um, what else, what else, what else? 11.6 uh, million customers. If I heard that correctly, that's small for a data set. Says pick, pickled, pick nose. Well, you know, complain to the company. I mean, write him a letter. Uh, what do you want me to do? Um, Matterport down seven cents. 23 me 775. Uh, AMC down 42 cents. ATIP down two. Uh, SoFi at 1516 now. Hood, Robin Hood holding 50, 57 up to 47. Uh, there you go. Um, and there you have it so what can i say now what they did not say what they haven't said is what are they going to do with the 900 million dollars they got or 750 million whatever that number was they have all this cash what are they going to do with that cash if they have a loss expected fair enough but what else are they going to do with the other 500 million i'm kind of curious to see what's up their sleeve here and i also am kind of curious to see when they uh, start earning profits on uh you know, revenues on these deals they're making. I'm sure there's a lot to talk about there. So far, 15, 14, uh, 23 and me, 774. Matterport, 15, 23, down 11 cents. Uh, ATIP down two cents, 424 to 425 right now. Uh, most databases are thousands of people. Um, and there you have it. Uh, we're waiting and watching and seeing what's going on. 15, 16 on SoFi. When will the breakout come? At any moment on SoFi. The selling pressure could ease at any moment, and then it takes off. Uh, 31 million traded on SoFi today. Flush them out. Now's the time. Today's the day. And we move forward from here to much higher levels per share. That's my take. 776 on 23andMe, down 16 cents. 
We're down 11 on Matterport. All right. Okay, 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 okay. Um, and, uh, okay. Um, um, uh, yeah, okay, Carter. I don't even know what that means. Uh, fair enough. Anyone can read that if they want. 15, 16 on SoFi. Uh, 160 on GameStop. Keep threatening and flirting with this 160 number. When is GameStop going to break out and go higher? We're down four cents on ATIP. Matterport, we're down nine cents now to 1525. Uh, 23 and me, 775 down 18 cents at the moment. <clears throat> Are we getting ready for another pop up? 24 point gain on the Dow, four points on SP, 15 on NASDAQ. Down 22 cents on a barrel of oil. The oil is going to drop, I think. Um, what else? Um, there it is. That's what I'm seeing here. 1515 on SoFi. Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right on. Carter, way to go, buddy. This is pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff here. Very cool stuff. Um, we're at fifteen fifteen on SoFi. Fifteen sixteen on SoFi. Hmm. Okay. Go to the moon. How about that? Uh, yes, there's my there's my thing. Such low volume on GameStop says A B volume on A on, on GameStop. 362,000 shares. Yes, indeed. SoFi volume, 31.2 million shares at 1515. 23andMe volume, 1 million shares. We just broke a million. Matterport volume today, 671,000 shares. 1524 right now. Um, AMC volume at 3269, 18 million. So SoFi is out trading um, uh, AMC today. Big time. That's it. That's the dealio here. Uh, um, let's see. Anyone have any problems with SoFi app for trading uh, adventures? Duncan wants to know. <clears throat> 15, 13, 15, 12 on SoFi stock right now. Uh, ATIP down 3 cents. Matterport down 16 to 15, 18. 23 and me, 772 down 21 cents. A little pullback coming here. The Dow up 26 still. Major container ports in China sees worsening congestion after COVID cases and may impact global trade yes we have been watching this story and following this story for weeks now this will not stop and this will create problems for year end right now christmas merchandise is not arriving on time to the u.s uh to other locales elsewhere christmas merchandise is held up at port in china all over the place there are delays everywhere right now problems 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 interesting how this is working out 15 14 on sofi at this moment in time cheers everybody so glad you're here fifth wheel up the fifth wall up six cents <clears throat> vector down a vector's up a penny just went up <clears throat> nap side up a penny um sex tear down 20 cents <clears throat> um ibm up 13 breaking our hearts um we got uh, Microsoft up a buck eighty-eight. Apple down three cents. Tesla down three dollars. <throat> Bed Bath and Beyond down sixty-nine cents. BlackBerry down twenty-one. Royal Caribbean down thirty-two cents. Amazon down eleven bucks. Facebook up forty-eight cents. Alphabet down thirty-three cents. Target down twenty-four cents. J.P. Morgan down a buck fifty. Costco up a dollar thirty. Walmart up seventy-six cents. Cisco down four cents. Nvidia up a dollar ninety-six. The Goldman Sachs Company <clears throat> down five fifty-three to four hundred nine. That is a bargain. Long term, that is a seven hundred dollar stock. Uh, get your options now for next year. Enjoy the ride. Intel down thirty eight cents and Micron up twenty three to seventy forty eight. That's what we got going here. Not a lot happening. It's a summer. It's a typical summer Friday with not a lot going on. Very frustrating to be uh, in the middle of it all, but we are in the middle of it all. <clears throat> and that's it. Fifteen thirteen on SoFi. Seven seventy one on twenty three and Me. Fifteen eighteen. Matterport down sixteen cents. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, you haven't covered GameStop at length for a while. Can you uh, cover your thoughts on what's going on at right now on GameStop? There's an article you should read that came out today on uh, the, in the Wall Street Journal, all about Ryan Cohen. Very interesting article talking about the history of Ryan Cohen and GameStop from day one when he was listening to what was happening with the stock and started buying it up. Uh, I love the story of how he became a director, how he took over the company, how he staffed it with his people, 
how this company is transforming itself. I like the whole thing. I, I like how the company has gone from a, a debt position of over $200 million in very little cash to no debt and $1.9 billion in cash. I really like this story. Um, I like how the company is building the, the, the distribution centers. And I like how this company is going to become a very e-commerce centric kind of company. I like it all. 159.94 on the stock. Uh, I don't like how cheap it is, but uh, I can't move the market by just looking at it. Uh, but I do like to talk about it. Um, a very interesting story in the Wall Street Journal on Ryan Cohen. I suggest you get your hands on it. Read it up. It looks pretty cool. Um, anyway, uh, let's go here. Um, yeah, you know. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, I think Mr. Cohen is uh, is uh, taking the stock in the right direction. I like the direction it's headed, uh, but uh, but uh, you know, is it fast enough for you? That's the question, isn't it? One sixty ten on the stock right now, down two twenty five on the day. Um, let's go. Um, and anyone want? Somebody wants to know. Sitting Bull wants to know. Is anyone here in Orlando, Florida area? How is the tourism affected by the surge? Anybody know the answer to that question? Um, we've got ATIP down one penny now. ATIP down one penny to four twenty six. About to turn the corner. Um, AMC only down twenty two cents. Matterport down eighteen. Twenty three and me seven sixty seven down twenty six cents. SoFi, 1509, uh, Robinhood, 5065, uh, GameStop, 169.10. Uh, that is where we're at right now. We're down just a little bit on some of our stocks, but just pennies here and there, except for GameStop down 2 bucks and SoFi down 238. That's the way it is right now. Um, Anthony Noto on CNBC right now. Is he talking? He's talking. He's talking on CNBC. Talk, Anthony, talk. Consumer debt and the health of the consumer, your ability to gauge creditworthiness there—is that shifting at all? Is that stabilizing or or not? You know, the team is doing a great job on the credit side of the equation. We have four different money in businesses. Um, two of those businesses benefit really well in the low interest rate environment, and two benefit in a high interest rate environment. And we saw a significant acceleration uh, in our personal loan business. Um, which grew tremendous growth as, as uh, individuals are looking to refinance out of variable rate debt into fixed rate debt. Our, our um, term loan debt, which is unsecured for personal loans, had a great quarter. We're still seeing you know, strong underlying trends uh, as it relates to the demand for our non-lending products. We had a, a inflection point in our financial services business, which is SoFi Money, uh, SoFi Invest, and SoFi Credit Card. Uh, the revenue there increased two and a half x sequentially, and is really starting to drive great monetization. And we now have about 2.7 million members in that segment, which is not tied to the credit level. Um, but our credit performance is really strong. We're seeing really good trends on 90-day uh, delinquencies continue to be very stable. Anthony, good morning. It's Sierra. You did mention that user growth, which I know doubled the past quarter to 2.6 million. But you know, everyone in fintech is trying to expand their offerings you guys included become a one-stop shop and the user numbers are really important here so that you can upsell or cross sell when i look across the landscape i see square with more than 30 million users venmo 40 million a few years ago Robinhood, 18 million are you comfortable where sofi is in terms of its user numbers do you need to be growing them faster uh we are dumb question you know 113 percent which is the eighth quarter faster year year growth and all members are not created equal. The lifetime value of our members is meaningfully higher than all the companies that you mentioned because we are a one-stop shop. And so if you're just in a checking or savings account or a payment app, um, the lifetime value there is okay, but it's $100 to $200 over the lifetime of that member. When we extend someone a loan, we'll make between $800 of variable profit to $3,000 of variable profit. So each one of our members is worth meaningfully more for two reasons. One, we're selling them multiple products, and two, each one of those products inherently has a higher lifetime value and higher unit of economics than just a, a simple payment app. And so uh, at 2.7 million, uh, we're really happy with the growth rate and the trajectory, and we continue to see really strong underlying trends. We're the only place you can go to borrow, save, spend, invest, and protect on one platform. No one else has that value proposition, and it's working. We saw an increase of cross block products of 1.7x versus a year ago, which is a tremendous economic benefit and a testament to the 
value of our products. Right, and to that point, Anthony, I know that you guys are in investment or growth mode. It seems like this past quarter, uh, investors latched on to your outlook, um, which may not be as profitable as some had hoped. And I just wonder, you guys just went public uh, earlier this year. Public market's not as forgiving, at least from what we're seeing from SoFi in terms of growth versus profitability picture. Do you have to change your messaging? Do you think um, that it's easier, it might have been easier to stay private? Dumb question. You know, being a public company is exactly where we need to be and we want to be as a company. The process of going public is one that goes through a digestion period where the investors are learning more about the business in greater detail because there's more disclosure in it. It takes a while to educate them. Our goal is to maximize our value for the shareholder. We love for our stock to be up after every quarter. Um, but the underlying trends in our business couldn't, you know, couldn't be more in line with what we thought and quite frankly, exceeding an expectation is what we wouldn't have been able to maintain our outlook despite the student loan refinancing being pushed off till next year in terms of the moratorium. Uh, in terms of the you know, profitability of the company, we want to compound growth over decades. So for every $100 we drive in from our revenue, we'll drop 30% to the bottom line and we'll reinvest the other 70% so we can go for years because the market opportunity in front of us is, is so big. And so we've been profitable for the last four quarters on, a, on an EBITDA basis and we'll continue to to drive that um, on, a, on an annual basis. All right, Anthony Noto, CEO of SoFi, thank you. Thank you guys, appreciate it. As we said earlier, DoorDash CEO. How do you like that? Um, <clears throat> stupid questions from stupid hosts who don't know what the hell they're doing. These are not market people, they're just reporters, and you got a guy there who's just sitting there going, I can tell you about my 12 different divisions. I can tell you how we're growing on every metric we have. We have costs to go public like any other public company. You have one-time expenses when you go public one time, and you guys want to concentrate on that loss as our biggest problem, uh, then you guys don't know what you're talking about. But he, he can't say it. He can only think it. I can say it because I'm not on CNBC. These morons uh, are being told by what to ask by producers in their ears, and they don't know what they're asking these guys. Uh, if they actually had real market people on the air talking to these guys, it would make a lot more sense. And it would be a lot more pro, a lot more meaningful for people who are watching. But uh, you, you think you should have stayed as a private company? I mean, what, what a stupid, idiotic waste of human resources that is to ask such a dumb question uh, on, on a multi-billion-dollar platform like this. It, it just drives me nuts. In any event, yeah, the stock's at fifteen oh six, folks. This guy knows what he's doing. Uh, this is the sharpest cookie in the room, uh, and I think that. Uh, uh, these shares down here are a bargoon and uh, will not last long. Uh, but, you know, uh, you got to tolerate the good days with the bad days. 33 million shares traded now on the day of SoFi, 1507, 1508 right now. Um, and uh, anyone who listened to this guy will realize, man, this guy knows what he's doing. Uh, he has got a company firing on all systems, all cylinders. He's growing. I love the answer about his his clientele. You know, you don't have as many members as Robinhood does. That's right. Robinhood has 18 million members who don't pay any fees <laughs> to trade. They can trade for free. Robinhood loses hundreds of millions of dollars every three months and will, for the rest of this year, lose hundreds of millions of dollars. And SoFi makes money on an EBITDA basis because every client that SoFi gets can get involved in 15 different products, 12 different products all over the place. Uh, SoFi makes money from you here, from you here, from you here, from you here, from you here. They give a little away. They get a little over here. They have the loans, the credit cards. The, oh, my God. They have so much potential to make so much more money. A single client at SoFi is worth at least 10 times the money than a Robinhood client. At least, at least 10 to 1 per more profitable. So you take 2.6 million customers. Multiply by 10. That's 26 million really profitable customers. Robinhood has 18 million customers that I bet you less than a million make them any money. And the other 17 million cost them money. And Robinhood loses money. Uh, SoFi makes money. And this will continue. This will not end. Because once you're a customer of SoFi and you've taken a loan and you have a credit card and you have a line of credit and you get a mortgage and you buy a car and you trade stock, why, are you gonna, why would you dump them? What are you going to dump them for? You're going, to, you're going to maintain that relationship for a long, long time and you're going to build that relationship even further and further and further. Robinhood's a one-trick pony, buying and selling stock. What else can we do for you? That's it. That's the end of that. 
Uh, some of these other outfits, uh, there are one-trick ponies on some of the banking they offer or some of the purchasing you can do on their sites. That's it. That's all they've got. SoFi is your one stop for complete financial services. Uh, the stock is undervalued, underappreciated, not known yet by the wide, wide world. It's being dominated by the drop down today in price. That's all. This will go higher as the smart money keeps coming in here and going, yeah, that's all right, people. You just keep selling your stuff. Give, give it to us. You just keep giving us this cheap paper. We'll take it off your hands. Thank you very much. I, I don't believe that this stock, this company, will last that long as a private, as a, um, sorry, as a um, independent company. I don't think they're going to last as an independent company. They're going to be taken over by someone much larger with hundreds of billions of dollars of market cap. They will be taken over by a monster corporation. Could be an existing bank that could take them on. It could be a, a, a fang stock, but it's going to be somebody huge that will buy these guys. And do not be surprised if in the next few weeks and months you start seeing SEC reports coming out where declarations are made by how many different entities, institutions own more than 5% of this company's stock and more than 10%. That, I think, is coming as well. And so the, all the stock you see selling right now, it's being bought by somebody. And I think who's buying most of this paper, their legitimate buying, is being done by institutional buyers who have long-term op, uh, uh, objectives for a serious profit because of the takeover or they're going to be involved with the takeover. And so do not be surprised if that's possibly coming up here. We're at 15.04, down 2.41, uh, but I don't think we're going to last on here very long. Uh, Matterport down 9 cents now to 15.25. 23 me at 7.70. We're down uh, 23 cents on the day here. We got ATIP down half a penny. It's uh, at 4.26.5. Uh, ATIP is about to turn the corner and go green on the day. Um, we've got 26 cent loss on uh, AMC. That will go green shortly. Uh, the way I see it, uh, GameStop 160.04, only down 231 a share. SoFi at 15.05 right now, and Robinhood at 50.85. If Robinhood is trading at 58.85, uh, SoFi should be trading at uh, 60 bucks. Uh, they're worth more. They're worth more money. Uh, but that's just my opinion. What do I know? Um, you have to wait to see for it yourself. Uh, but by the time you see the difference, it'll be too late. You can't get in anymore at these cheap prices. Because by the time SoFi is 55 a share, you'll go, shoot, I should have bought it when it was 15 bucks when he was talking about that. But I didn't do that. I just watched it go to 50, but I didn't enjoy the ride as well. What can I say? Um, ATIP turned green. Ah, it's about to do that. Yes, yes, it is. Um. Yeah. What else is going on? Um. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. SoFi has also targets high earners as customers and offers multiple services. Robinhood targets people who are more inclined and able to purchase partial shares of stocks. Difference in value seems pretty clear. Absolutely. Um. Yeah, SoFi up until now had a low institutional ownership. Maybe they were waiting for orchestrated. This end of the week drop to grab a big stake. Now, yes, this could well be what's going on here. Quietly picking this stuff up. Um, let's see uh, what else is going on here. Uh, uh, Seven seventy on twenty three and me down twenty three cents. Matterport down eleven right now. Uh, we've got Navsite up uh, up three cents. Uh, Sextera down sixteen. Fifth Wall up nine cents right now. IBM up thirty two cents, breaking everybody's heart at one forty three thirty nine. The Dow's up 34, a little better. Uh, not a big, giant, happy move yet, but it is better. Definitely a better look at this point. Um, see how this all wants to work itself out, kids. Um, I'm going to be back on this afternoon at 3 o'clock for the final hour of our day today. I want to thank all of you for being here so far today. This is great. Thank you for the thumbs-ups. Also, all of, all of you have been giving me thumbs-ups today. We do have 585 thumbs-ups for this show. Uh, we might make 600 before I go off the air, and I love you for that. Thank you. Also, join me Saturday, Sunday, two live classes, if you dare, uh, Saturday at noon Eastern, Sunday at noon Eastern. We're going to talk about uh, options on Saturday, stock options. We're going to talk about the uh, writing in plain English of butterfly spreads, puts and calls. We're going to get into that. That's going to be really entertaining. Uh, should be a lot of fun watching me try to figure that one out on, on the air. I'm looking forward to it. And Sunday, how does Bruce pick his stocks? How does Uncle Bruce pick his stocks uh, to recommend to clients? 
uh, we're going to go into that. How do I figure out uh, a company, you know, whether it's worthy of your time or not? Oh, anyway, there you go. We'll see what's going on. Um, thank you for being here today. Uh, love it. Um, you know, we're going to catch you this afternoon at 3 o'clock for the last hour of the day and then the first hour of the aftermarket. We'll see what's going on. Uh, libation Friday is usually what happens on Fridays. We're down only seven cents on Matterport, fifteen twenty-seven. We're still down twenty-three cents on twenty-three and me at seven seventy. We got uh, GameStop one fifty-nine eighty-two. We've got SoFi fifteen oh two right now, and the volume on on, on SoFi today uh, thirty-four point four million, thirty-four point four million shares in eighty-five minutes. Uh, very heavy volume there today. Unbelievable. Um, and here we go. Here we go. I couldn't snag that $12.5 put or a $12.5 call for October uh, at $3, but I was able to snag a $13 October one for $275. That's even better. Uh, well, that's not even better, but that's okay. That's fine. Yeah, that's an okay buy. All right. Well done. A $2 book value right now um, and a 7% premium until October. Yeah, not too bad. Even if this goes to seventeen dollars a share, you're laughing. It's a four dollar book value plus a buck premium. That's a five dollar contract. Pretty well doubling your money. Thank you very much. Um, GameStop one sixty oh two coming back on again. Down seven cents on Matterport. Uh, we're only down twenty one cents on twenty three and me at seven seventy two. Down a penny on ATIP. So close. Oh, so close. Oh, what can I say? Uh, should be fun here. Thanks everybody. Says John. Um, thank you everybody for popping through here. This is good stuff. Uh, we're up 45 on the Dow, getting stronger now, and we are up three and a half on S&P. We're down two on Nasdaq. The Dow is going up. Uh, very good, very good. Uh, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, face mask fights escalate in Texas and Florida as Delta variant of COVID forces Louisiana to send ambulances to other states. They don't have hospital space. They're sending they're sending their patients to other states in hospitals. To get looked after. That's how bad it is in Louisiana. Yuck. Uh, let me repeat that. Yuck. Uh, yeah, how would you like to be a relative of someone that you love dearly and watch them being driven in, a, in an ambulance to another state for treatment that might not save their lives? How would you like to talk about that? You can't go visit them. Not allowed in there. Unbelievable. So fine. 1502 GameStops 1602 ATIP down a penny Matterport down a penny Matterport only down a penny to 1533 we're going positive now we're going green on Matterport get ready kids we're going green on Matterport oh man uh, uh you know I don't know Zach I don't know why this is with these uh, contracts I don't run the option market but it is what it is I might want to sell yours near fourth quarter earnings announcement uh whatever it says Mike um let's see uh matterport 1532 down two pennies come on matterport take another shot uh we've got one penny drop on atip we're at 1502 on sofi right now uh 5143 on robin hood going higher robin hood is going higher and sofi is sitting at 1501 go figure the anomaly the, the silliness of it absolutely ridiculous Robin Hood's uh, value, Robin Hood's actual market cap, $43 billion. SoFi's market cap, $12 billion. Uh, just think if, 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 uh, if uh, SoFi's market cap were equal to Robin Hood's market cap, it would be about uh, 50, 60 bucks a share. There you go. There's there's the difference right there. Uh, one is woefully underpriced, and it's not Robin Hood that's woefully underpriced. Wow, unbelievable, a wacky doodle. A Matterport down a penny to fifteen thirty three. Uh, ATIP down a penny at four twenty six. We're about to turn the corner on these stocks. They're going to go higher. I think so. Uh, what can I say, folks? We're about to see a run here on a couple of our stocks. I, I just get the impression we're about to go up. Just about to go up. What can I tell you? We're about to go up. 42 point gain on the Dow. While we, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, goofy. Bizarro world goofy is what we have right now. Bizarro world goofy. $15 on SoFi right now. 15 bucks. Uh, ATIP down a penny. Uh, Matterport down three. AMC down 17 cents. Coming on. 23andMe down 17 cents. It's coming on. I think they're going higher. Go SoFi. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Uh, let's see. 
<laughs> Uncle Bruce, the good news is Louisiana is at the bottom of every positive statistical category. I bought me some Matterport at 1334. Right on, 1330 right here, about to go. Um, I feel it, 776 on 23 knee. Looks like it's getting better. Uh, and then 15 bucks on SoFi right now, 15 to 1501 on SoFi. What a what a what a weird weird world in which we're living right now. Some of these stock prices. What can I say? But then again, stocks. Some stocks are known. Robinhood. Some stocks are unknown. SoFi, uh, ATIP, Matterport, 23 Me. They don't know them yet. 778 on Matter on 23 Me going up again. Uh, Matterport down three cents. AMC down only 18. Uh, ATIP unchanged. ATIP unchanged at 427 on the day. Unchanged right now. It's come all the way back up two cents on ATIP 429 up two on the day the low 415 That's a 14 cent improvement from the low of the day took a long time, but we got it We're at 293,000 volume now ATIP to 429 up two cents. It's in the green Matterport your next a M E your next AMC your next time to go in the green you guys 1501 on SoFi, you're next as well. There you go, guys. Um, that's what we got. All right. Well, I will see you today at 3 o'clock Eastern time for the final hour of the day. I want to thank you all for being here today. Thank you for these thumbs up. So we now have 607, just like I figured we'd get 600 thumbs up before I went off the air. 607 thumbs ups. Cheers to all of you helping out this channel with the thumbs up count. Uh, cannot thank you enough for that. That helps the analytics. Thank you so much, guys. We're getting better. Um, let's go. Trying to go green and stay green, baby. That's what we're all about here. Up two cents on ATIP. 15 to 15 to 1 on SoFi. We're up 370 in Robin Hood, up uh, two on ATIP. How about that? Come on, Matterport. It's your turn. 23 me, 778. It's your turn, too. We're uh, up nine on Fifth Wall, up two on Vector, up one on NavSite. Sextra down 26 cents and IBM up 33, breaking our hearts. So, got a Dow up 38 points. Come on, markets, give us a shot and let's go higher. 777 on ME, 23 me at 777, uh, down 16 cents right now. AMC just went green. AMC up a nickel, just went green too. ATIPI is now green. Uh, Matterport is about to go green. It's next to go green. Come on, you guys. Time to make it happen. <sighs> I try. I, I try. I try. I try. Thanks as always. See you later. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, nope, I didn't do that. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, where are we at now? Up to there on ATIP. AMC up a nickel. Time to turn it around, guys. 15 bucks on SoFi. Anyway. I'll see you at three. We'll follow these in markets in the meantime, and let's see if we can get richer then. Take care, everybody. Bye for now from Creston. See ya.